everybody, and welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Guess who's back? This episode is brought to you in part by Viore, my favorite t-shirt company. They also make pants, shorts, workout gear that you can also wear as casual wear every day. Everything Viore makes is designed to work out in, but it doesn't look or feel like it. It's so comfortable, you want to wear it all the time. And in fact, I do. You can see me in pretty much every single video we've made for the last six months wearing Viore t-shirts. If I'm wearing a shirt without a logo or anything from like a car event on it, that's a Viore t-shirt. I literally have 20 of them in my closet right now. The stuff is incredibly versatile. It can be used for any activity, running, training, swimming, yoga, but also great for lounging or, if you're me, to wear to work. Viore is 100% offsetting their carbon footprint and offsetting 100% of their of their plastic footprint by utilizing better sustainable materials for their products, which help empower your best active life. The clothing is incredibly versatile, comfortable, and durable, and designed to look great in everyday life, both in and outside the gym. Their website is easy to find the product you want. The sizing is true, right? And um, when you get this stuff and you take it out, you realize, wow, this stuff is very delightfully soft. And like, when I wear it to the gym, you don't, it doesn't show sweat. I don't get sweaty. I don't like looking sweaty, especially when I'm on camera, if we're filming in the summer, it's really hot out. Looking sweaty is not a good look. The Viore shirts I wear, which are called the Strata uh, fabric ones, it hides sweat. It just wicks that sweat. You don't see it. It doesn't stain. You don't look wet. It's great stuff. Viore is an investment in your happiness, and they're offering 20% off for our listeners for your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable, versatile clothes on the planet at viore.com slash tire. Now, it's not spelled exactly like it sounds. It's spelled V-U-O-R-I, V-U-O-R-I dot com slash tire, and you'll get 20% off your first purchase. Enjoy free shipping on U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. So go to viore.com slash tire, V-U-O-R-I dot com slash tire, and cover discover the versatility and comfort of Viore clothing. Uh, you guys know that I have a new job, right? I'm editor at large of Road and Track. If you follow me on Twitter, I talked about that. It's like a real job, full time job. And part of that is uh, these events, these road and track experiences. There is one coming up I want to tell you guys about. Uh, it's called Rally U. It's a it's a quick one. It's up in the Seattle area. It's a two day event featuring beautiful uh, Washington uh, Pacific Northwest roads, five star accommodations, five star dining, and uh, rally school at Dirtfish. Dirtfish is one of my favorite places in the world, and if you are going to do uh, professional driving instruction of any kind, I strongly suggest doing rally school first because you learn so much about car control. Like, not that the tarmac racing schools aren't very good. They are very good, and they will teach you race craft, and they'll help you learn lines around a racetrack and feel what it's like to drive at the limit, but a rally school teaches you what it's like to drive beyond the limit. Uh, when the car is in moving side to side, loose surface, weight transfer, all these concepts that really translate to other types of driving. So if you go to roadandtrack.com slash experiences, click on that Rally U right there for all the info, pricing, the dates. They're in July. It's the second week in July. And uh, come on down. Hang out with the Road and Track staff, premium facilities, five-star dining, and a first-class rally driving experience with Rally U. Go to roadandtrack.com slash experiences. We're also brought to you in part today by Evercoat Body Shop. This is a product that is great for home mechanics, great for professionals, right? And we give a lot of professional advice on the show, and some is a little more professional than others. But 
if you want your auto body work to look professional, use what the professionals use. Evercoat is the number one brand preferred by professionals. Evercoat Body Shop products are easy to use, whether you're a professional or DIYer, with a variety of great products, always one that's right for your project. It works great on steel, fiberglass, and other substrates. There's only three easy steps to using Evercoat. Prep, fill, and sand. That's it. The perfect mix guide makes it easy to get the right ratio of filler and cream hardener. It dries in about 15 minutes and sands up to 50% faster than the competition, giving you a flawless finish. Evercoat Body Shop takes the guesswork out of bodywork and ask for it by name at Advance Auto Part Stores. Last but certainly not least, we are brought to you by Policy Genius. At, listen, understanding the value of property is important, right? It is important. It's important to you, right? And when you're buying a home, you've got a lot to juggle. Policy Genius makes it easy to get insurance quotes from top companies so you can find your lowest price fast. This shouldn't be your job. It should be the job of professionals. And the best part about Policy Genius is they work for you. They don't work for the insurance company, right? So it's not, it's not in their benefit to, to take money from you. It's in their benefit to get you the best price and fast. And home, home and auto insurance are on the rise industry-wide, so it's a great time to make sure you're not overpaying for coverage. It's the one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. All you have to do is go to policygenius.com, answer a few basic questions about yourself and your property, your home, your auto. Policy Genius will show you price estimates for policies that fit your search. And the Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you more money. And if you like what they find, they will get you switched over for free. Customers who bundled their home and auto policies with Policy Genius saved an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying. The Policy Genius team, like I said, works for you without bias or favor to any one insurance company. And even after you're covered, Policy Genius offers claim support and easy reshopping to find savings when it's time to renew. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees, they don't sell your info to third parties, and their top-notch services earn them thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. So head over to policygenius.com and get your free home insurance quotes and see how much you could save with Policy Genius. All right, folks, Jeff Glucker of Hooniverse is here today. We're talking about that Mitsubishi love, project cars. We're talking about beers. We're talking about Pearl Jam. We're talking about all the things that we love with one of our oldest and most regular podcast guests, Jeff Glucker of Hooniverse. We love seeing him. It's always a pleasure having this guy in studio, and he's on the Smoking Tire podcast today. Yeah, buddy. L'chaim. L'chaim. Welcome. No booze today. I've actually not had alcohol in, in five days since I got back from Mexico. Stone cold sober. I just got back from Hawaii, so. Your Hawaii trip looked dope. It was some dope. nice photography going on Thank there. Thank you. It was two Hawaii trips sort of back to back, which sounds pretentious. Mm -hmm. but Did you turn a press launch into a vacation? No, 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 no. One, vacation the first into a press one, launch? No, neither one. <laughs> the first one was my wife's um, national company meeting, oh. which is normally in February, but COVID yeah. stuff pushed it to a week away from a trip we planned Oh. Like a year ago. Oh, okay. So cool. my wife and I went. Uh, then we came back for a week, and then we went to Kauai. Oh, you you literally went had two separate trips. Yeah. in one month to Hawaii. Yes. Oh, that rules. <laughs> it was awesome. That rules. It feels weird though, because you're like, I need to get back to work. Yeah, yeah. And also, I've been eating and drinking way too much. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I we did four days in Mexico, and even I was like itching. I was like, I, I I'm having a really hard time not doing anything. Nice. And four days of eating at, at Nobu restaurants. Every oh day. yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Where in Mexico? The Nobu Hotel. Oh, there's a Nobu Co Hotel. Yeah, wow. there's one. Well, there's one in Malibu too. Okay, next to the restaurant. Because we were thinking, my wife is already thinking like, where are we going next? Maybe we pop down to Cabo. So the one thing I learned about Cabo, and I said this on the last show, is. There, mo you know, it's on the end of the peninsula, yeah. right? So you've been before, okay, for a press launch, <laughs> right? So what a terrible place for a press launch. Uh, the roads were awesome because it was all really? dirt. We did dirt oh. roads. Oh, okay, cool. Then that that makes sense. But like, so the pull up just a map of Cabo, please, Zach. So the the actual 
Cabo, which means fucking Cape in Spanish, is where is the the southern part here. Zoom out, please, Zachary. So, the Cape is at the very southern part, right? Yep. Most of the like really nice places are on the eastern edge between Cabo San Lucas and San Jose del Cabo. Okay. Like that stretch right yeah. there. Okay. So, but. Nobu Hotel is just to the left. It's at like the seven o'clock position. Okay. Um, just yeah, like a little further to the left. Like yeah, on right, basically there. That green square is pretty much where it is. Yes. Okay. Next to Hard Rock. So like you didn't go to the Hard Rock. <laughs> actually, if that place was named anything but fucking oh, Hard really? Rock, it's really nice. It's okay. like brand new. All right. And actually, they're still they, making. They hard wouldn't rocks? let us in. We wanted to go in and look around, and they're like, "I'm sorry, no." We're like, "We're staying at." The the Nobu right. next door. They're like, they're like, yeah, no, you're you're not staying here. And they're like, we're like, we just want to like take a look. And they're like, no, wow. And we're like, but if you if anyone from there tried to walk into Nobu, you just could. Like, right? Was, were you like, I want to see what's in the side of this place so bad now? Because they had water slides, and Hannah okay. really likes water slides. But point being, it's on the western side. Mm -hmm. It's windy. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Pacific, right. and I didn't fucking it's do not golf. I, I didn't do that math. Golf side. It's like hotter mm -hmm. and less wind. Yep. So just bear that. It was still very nice. The hotel was great. The food was great. All that shit was great. Okay. But bear in mind, it's probably 10 to 15 degrees colder all the time on that western side. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Anyway. Good to know. Anyway. Yeah. But it's fucking Nobu food. It's all Nobu That's food. insane. Breakfast, I didn't know that lunch, was a dinner, thing. Fucking Nobu. Right? Like Nobu Steakhouse, Nobu Mexican. I Nobu thought it was just a sushi restaurant. This no. This is like a, an this empire. This dude wants to fucking... And there's like a bunch of them. Is he like a smarter Steve Wynn? Can you just look up how many Nobu hotels there? There's there's at least 10 of them. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fucking all over the place. And uh, and they really have wow. nailed the aesthetic. It looks just like the one really? in Malibu. Yeah. How many are there are there? Are they a global? global oh, look at that! One of the founders is Robert De Niro. Oh, dude, De Niro. Bobby D. De Niro's in the promotional video. Is he really? playing the lobby? Welcome Bobby D. Uh, welcome to the Nobu. Bobby D. is all about it. Where are the? They like hotels? Scorsese age him down for the videos <laughs> yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that looks like Greece. Oh, that, damn! Can that place. Is, that one's pretty sick. Okay, so this is a this is ridiculous. Yeah, I had no idea. It's not, um, it wasn't as, that photo makes it look very obscene. It wasn't Atlantic City, Atlantic City. These are newly really announced. Hamburg, <laughs> Al Cobar, San, oh, San Sebastian. Thaddeus has wanted us to go to San Sebastian just Santorini, to eat and drink Rome, uh, for a long time. Santorini's probably great too. Yeah. San Sebastian, have you heard about San Sebastian? No. The go, when you get a chance, watch the Bourdain Parts Unknown with San Sebastian. It's basically... Like the main streets of downtown, it's like in between. It's it's Basque. It's like in between France and Spain. Yeah, and right on the corner. Okay, and like there's these like walk streets, and the bars just oh. open, and it's just like mad tapas and mad drinking, and it's a pub crawl like that every like night. Heaven. Everybody, it sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, back to back Maui though sounds pretty. Well, nice Maui too. and Kauai, it's two different. Oh ones. right, yeah. Kauai's better, right? I prefer Kauai. Kauai's the oldest island. It's more chill. It's Jurassic but it's Park. Beautiful. It's Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where Maui is, has, there's more stuff to do. Yeah, it's yeah. more of a nightlife. And then Oahu, um, where like Waikiki, that's LA. Yeah. That's it's LA. Right. It's, it's still awesome because it's Hawaii of the North Shore. I've seen Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. I know what goes on. <laughs> yeah. Look out for the ice, bro. Um, the, I love Kauai just because it's, it, feels there's still fun stuff to do but it's also just chill and and yeah i don't know i think beautiful. that's where we like can you go fly direct there from la you have to go yes through, you can, can fly from la to, can? to lihui airport yeah sick mm -hmm. that's a, that's that's nice they also i was telling uh zach this before the show um now from boston hawaiian airlines just added a direct flight to honolulu and oh. it is 11 hours and 40 minutes Wow, you really need to. If, that's I mean, a long if you're one. you're committed. If fucking, you're going, fucking rainy here, dude. Fucking wicked far, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that's a long one, but like to get to L from L A to fucking Frankfurt or something is like twelve hours. It is, you know, it is. Yeah, but there's a reason why East Coasters don't just pop to Hawaii. Like in in California, yeah. we can get to Hawaii, where right. they can go to the Caribbean. Which right, is right. Well, we we thought about you know because we do the sailing thing. Yeah. We were like, oh, British Virgin Islands, we should do that. Yeah. But it's <laughs> three flights to get to the yeah. Caribbean. I was like, ah, maybe not. Right. Right. But yeah. No, you gotta go. You Miami, you gotta, then you, you got to yeah. do the math, the flight flying math. Yeah, I'm trying matter. to go. I'm trying to go back to Europe sometime this summer, and you know, got to do that math. 
Not on vacation. There's there's going to be uh, you know a mirror oh, drive. Oh, drive okay, is okay. going to be Europe, and and apparently it'll be somehow easier for me to do Ferrari two nine six if I do it in fucking Italy and blah blah blah. blah, blah. Nice. Okay. I don't know. Two nine six looks like it could be could be kind of exciting. I don't know though. shit about it. It's, t- it's a hybrid <laughs> twin turbo V six. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a baby uh, the two SF90. Nine six. Yeah. Is that what it? Okay. It's the replacement for the F eight. Right, so oh, okay. no more V8 twin right. turbo. It's V6 twin turbo now. Okay, I know you say that uh, yeah, V6 small twin Revy, turbo hybrid. Because who just came out with a sick ass V6? MC20. Yeah, that MC20 engine just was great, insane, right? Yeah, and the NSX Type S engine is also great. Okay, when the fucking exhaust baffles are open. Yeah, like it's possible to make a great. Yeah, V6. yeah, totally, totally. And if anyone's gonna do a decent job, like Ferrari will. Like, yeah. you ever heard of Dino? Dinos sound <laughs> awesome. Yeah, like they do. They sound dope. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll okay. see what it's like to drive. I mean, it it looks like SF ninety. Yeah. If you parked one of those near an SF ninety, but not immediately next to it, <laughs> it would be tough for me to it's tell. It's like a different. soft focus F- mm-hmm. SF ninety. It's got kind a little of. bokeh. Uh, it looks like a happy Ferrari. It's got a nice big smile, <laughs> almost like a old. It does look like a happy car. Right. It doesn't look like an angry car. Like an eight twelve is an angry car. You know what's hilarious though? That shot of the rear three quarter, the red mm-hmm. one. <laughs> I just I just had the dumbest thought because when the C8 came out, I was like, oh, I was trying to be a Ferrari. And I'm looking like at that. I'm like, oh, I was trying to that be a C8, like a C8 Corvette. <laughs> My brother just bought a C8. Cool. Not cool? Yeah. It's not the best time in his life to be buying one because of just other stuff that uh-huh. we don't need to get into. But I'm very happy that he can afford it. Oh, and he bought what one. And he's not a car guy. So, he's a, so it was funny because he doesn't realize when you buy a fast car, other cars that think they're fast – when they see you on the highway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what it is, man. Every single fucking charger that pulls up next to me oh, yeah. revs on me. I'm like, don't, don't. He's like, no, I know, I know. Mm. I'm like, just just be smart. That's called Duntov's rule of charger. <laughs> yeah, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's happy. I'm not, I don't want to talk shit to my brother. I was like, before you do anything to this car, though, just just run it by me. Like, before you is do exhaust. Are you talking about, mod- about yeah. modding it? Yes. Oh. He's like, yeah, I'm thinking about headers. I'm like, you don't even know what headers are. Yeah, why? Be very careful about that. Right. I'm like, like, the less you do to this car, the better. Yeah. Wheels and tires, that's good for most people. Maybe exhaust. And you have a decent chance of making that thing sound like shit. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I think Borla might have a good kit for it. And with a mid-engine car, you're now talking about different types of heat management and stuff. You might melt shit. (laughs) That's true. Seriously, it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. People who put like aftermarket headers on fucking Lambos and Ferraris and stuff, <laughs> and you, you <laughs> melt <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah. And the bumper's gone. Yeah, you, fi- you shoot fire. Yeah. Now you get the fire tune. <laughs> right, start right. melting shit. Uh, yeah. What's his motivation for wanting to mod it if he's not a car person? Uh, just because he, he chicks. No, it's, it's <laughs> he, he's getting brought. It's like, into oh, the this game. could be louder, right? I'm like, yeah, it could be. The C8 is a little quiet. So he met know. another Corvette owner that was trying <laughs> no, he to. Says, he did. joined a forum. No, but he sent me a picture of a hat. He's like, I think I might become this guy. I'm like, don't become that guy. And he's younger than me too. But then he also at his gym, he he parked and he came out and there was so he has a white with black trim one uh-huh. and there was a C7 the same way. He's like, look at this fool thinking he's better than me. I'm, I'm like, he's already going. He was joking when he sent the message. Is it but, a manual? He is better than you. No. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's uh, I'm happy that he got this car he wanted. So cars at the gym, especially if you go to like a meathead gym, the parking lot can be very, very interesting. So he lives in the Woodlands, which uh-huh. is outside Houston. Yeah. So the 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 cars you're gonna see are Lambos. Yes. And F350s. Right. And the F350 guy probably has more money than the Lambo. Of course guy. he does. Um. Yeah. Nothing. He's gotta in fuel between. that thing. <laughs> Yes, Lambos yeah. are reasonably efficient. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I worked out at Gold's Gym in Venice once. Oh, really? The parking lot was extraordinary. Not as extraordinary as the things I saw inside the gym, but like right. the parking lot was like G wagon, wide body charger, yeah. wide body S class, like multiple <laughs> everything chopper, modified, multiple cho- everything modified. I modified my rims. body. Yes. I got to modify my car. Everything on rims. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was the meatiest, yeah. the meatiest cars. Wide body chargers. Yeah, yeah. I'm on, I'm the, on nitrous. The, my car's on nitrous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the meatiest yeah. shit yeah. ever. That's awesome. Yeah, they like they they get the nitrous tank, but they slap the sticker of the steroid brand they use. Yeah. on on the nitrous D-balls. tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the most important thing is that you got that Instagram handle on the quarter window. Got to have it. I like love it. Like your Petter Salberg. I, <laughs> I love it when I see those on stock vehicles. Oh, yeah. I'm like, why would I follow your Dodge Caliber? Like, I'm not, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Our mod's coming, and you went with the sticker first. Yeah. Like, let's get the at least the wheels and tires and maybe an intake. I think it's just intake. the targeted advertising that got them. I think it is targeted. Identify your ride. The company that makes that garbage tried to advertise with us. Really? Yep. They were very nice, and I just very honestly said, 
I loathe your product yeah. and it makes me hate people. Yeah. And they said, we understand. No problem. <laughs> See you we later. We get it. Yeah, yeah, we get it. I had a company <laughs> reach out to me and ask, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to lean into the political side of this, but they they asked if on the back of my Montero, I wanted to do one of those um, like American flag overlays on the back oh, yeah. of my glass. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I love our country. Can you, can you I love our flag. Say, can I, don't, I have one blue stripe? Yeah. I'm like I don't, I'm not I'm not putting the flag on there. Like I have a bunch of dumb stickers and like stuff that makes you should me do laugh. Like a rising sun, like a Japanese, like a rising no. sun. On the I have a, I got a, a tattoo recently that has a sunset portion on it, and it's like a reddish. So some guy messaged me on Instagram. He's like, "Yo, that's a rising sun." People find that offensive. I'm like. Well, the Japanese guy who did the tattoo didn't find it, and it was like his design. Yeah. So, like, if he's doing it as a rising sun, I said he could do the design. It's a sunset. Yeah. I'm like, so. <laughs> I'm like, it's a sunset. Is that, I mean, it's not just a sunset. What, what is a? Fa- I mean, it's not the Japanese. He's like, flag. he's like, U.S. soldiers could see that, and no. like, I'm like. Um, my, my dad, who was in the Navy for 20 years, thought it was cool, and he hates tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> like someone who fought in World War II? <laughs> I don't like, know. Literally, if like a 95-year-old Starts person- beat me with a stick? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I was just in Hawaii, and no one older? said anything. <laughs> I was literally- I had a tank top. At Pearl Harbor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no right. one said shit. <laughs> yeah. No one said shit. <laughs> the ferry driver was like, cool ink, and I, bro. I, I wasn't trying to like come back at the guy, because he was like, hey, you, he, like, he tried to say it as if he was warning me. Like, Right. I don't think he would, he didn't think he was being a dick. He wasn't trying to be a dick. Sure. But I'm like, one, I didn't get this tattoo for you. Like, two, like, it's not what it is. Like, I see why you think that. But, and he's like, okay, man. Just, but like, like, wait, just was the implicate implication that all sunsets are verboten, or I don't know. the things that look like the Japanese flag are verboten? I think it's because it resembles. It, my tattoo is reddish. Like, it is a red looking sunset. Huh. But I'm like, whatever, man. It's there's also a palm. So tree the controversy on Wikipedia is that mm. basically the rising sun was used during uh, Imperial Japanese on military during their expansion. And, yeah. So. Yes, some countries found that image just reminded them of that happening. Oh, okay. Um, but it is also currently used for various self-defense forces in the Japanese. So it's also used for sunsets. Yeah. <laughs> Turns. I mean, this look, is actually. And it's, not got, a, it's not a rising sun. It's a setting. Sun. I mean, look, he's got a point. Confederate flag on his other fucking yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you want to be offended by that under the T-shirt? <laughs> want to be offended by something? Let's get offended by something. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, am I in camera five? I do not have a Confederate flag, and I actually love the dude because I love uh, the '68 Charger is one of my favorite cars, and I hate the the General Lee version, and yeah. I love that someone did the. Um, they did a blue one. It was like, who was the general? Like Custer or someone? They, oh. they did like the American flag on the roof. Oh, like a Grant? Like yeah, a it was a Grant. I think it was a Grant. Grant. There's oh, a Grant one. A Gra- that, general Grant blue. Charger? Yep, yep. Oh. blue with the U.S. flag. And oh. it's like a big... Now like, that's kind of you. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. General it is Grant. a General yeah. Grant Charger. That looks fucking good. It's yeah. like the light blue. <laughs> yep. It's got the turbo fan wheels. Yeah. U.S. flag. I... Does that have the right number of stripes for the period, or the right number of stars? It has for the a period? different because it has the rounded. Uh, well, that there's two different pictures because in one uh, it has an older style yeah. on the roof, and then the other one it has the. I kind of dig that. I know that's <laughs> oh, pretty the old style. That's pretty. Yeah, oh that's, yeah, there's the old style with the roundy, the roundy deal. That one's a toy. That's a toy, but still. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I'm, me too. I'm, <laughs> I'm with that. Yeah, fuck generally, and I grew. You know, I, I was I, I spent a lot of my youth in Atlanta, where like. It was taken for granted that Robert E. Lee was like a hero. It's like, actually, hang yeah. on a second there. Right. Mm-hmm. Fucking car. Well, I love that mountain. I said, like, I'm not going to get political. Now we're like, fuck Robert E. Lee. <laughs> fuck Robert E. Lee. <laughs> I think we can say it. That's it's okay even, to say If that's it's controversial not. to you, I like, I literally don't need you right. as a fan right. or a right. listener if you don't understand why Robert E. Lee is not a hero. I am with you. I am <laughs> like, with you 100%. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of history, I, you know, I listen to The Dollop. Okay. And do you listen? You ever listen to it? I listen to it a ton. I love it. I was did jealous to, when Gareth was on. Did you listen to the most, the Steven Seagal one? They did a Steven Seagal one? It's a three-parter. Oh, it's my six God. six hours of Steven, the story of Steven Seagal. So, and my it's dollop fucking has, my crazy. My dollop has slowed down because I started listening to Always Sunny because I love that mm-hmm. show. So, their podcast is really entertaining. Yeah. But I got to mix the dollop back in. Yeah, yeah. The six hours of Steven oh. Seagal is insanity. But to go back to, to Cars, the one they put up uh, today or yesterday is called The Taxi Wars. But it's about the invention of the taxi cab, the creation of uh, checker cab and yellow cab, and also the invention of, and also Hertz Rent-A-Car. It's all tied into one story. They literally had 
gun battles. Like there was a f- gun battles between Yellow Cab and Checker Cab. Did they talk about medallions at all? Yes. Okay. They, that's what the gun battles were fucking okay. over. The city allowed, the city endorsed one company versus another, right, right. and they were literally having fucking shootouts. And you would, in the I, you would pass those medallions down to family members. I yeah, think. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, at one point, like whatever the last year was before Uber yeah. really took over New York City, that fucking guy, that that asshole guy, uh, with the crazy Lotus, Frank. Frank. Oh, <laughs> that guy who was like a real yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. lunatic right. and fucking loses shit all the time. Yeah, that guy got all his money. From from medallions, really? Yeah, he sold his medallions and then retired to California. Oh, but like the last year before Uber, a medallion was like five hundred grand. That's insane. Can you look up the index, the value of a New York City taxi medallion? Because you it, still do need one to yeah. run a yellow cab. But it can't be the same. No, right? no, certainly not. Right. It, it peaked at like you know oh uh, eleven or whatever. That would um, suck to have bought <laughs> medallions. Around 2010, the, the market value of a medallion was 600000 It peaked what? 2013 at a over million. a million. Wow. Yeah. A and now bucks. I don't know what it's worth right now. Ooh, but we'll find out. Yeah. When Uber not, came, they must have been like, yeah. you've got to be. Like, yeah. Uh, well, because the medallions, like, it, 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 yeah, yes, it was kind of a scam with unions and all this stuff and self-dealing and all right. this crazy shit. But also, like... You had to like pass a background check to get one, right? And you had to like have corporate insurance, like things that you kind of wish Uber drivers would have. Yes. You know, like, <laughs> today the value is a hundred k, which is still and medallion a owners lot. are left it's a lot, mired but if in it, debt. If you bought it for nine hundred grand, mm-hmm. you are the NFT Twitter. <laughs> I guy. was gonna say, yeah. Oh, well, here we go. The med- the next paragraph. Medallions drop in value is due in part to the overwhelming demand for rideshare services provided by etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Unlike taxi drivers, the drivers of these companies are not beholden to strict rules and regulations. And uh, yeah, that's wild. Yep. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. Like that guy bought Jack Dorsey's tweet for like two and a half million or something listen, like that. A lot of di- every day I wake up and think that there is no justice in the world. <laughs> and then I read a story like that. And I think that, yes, sometimes- it would have been better if Jack Dorsey bought it, though. If he bought it back for $28? No, if he was the one who <laughs> lost all the millions on it. That oh, would be a drop yeah, in the bucket to no, him. No, he, Yeah, he, I think, and I actually, to Jack Dorsey's credit, even though he called me an idiot, I think uh, he gave the money to charity that he when he sold oh, it. Oh, really? I think, he, I think when he sold it, he did donate the initial money to charity. I think it was $2.9 million. And then the guy, the guy who's got it now was really, le- which is what, which, which, it, that one story is my, in my opinion, is how NFTs work. You yes. have an audience, you're a somebody, you extract cash directly from your audience and sell them something yeah. that seems like it might have value, but the next person that paid all that money doesn't have an audience to hype up the thing right. with, that value is immediately tanked. Yeah. If you can't hype it, you've got fucking nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yep, I agree. So That's correct. Uh, Dorsey gave the money to charity. He did give the yep. money to charity. There you go. So, That's yeah. It's insane. And, and the guy listed it for $48 million, <laughs> and then the only uh, offer was 280 bucks. <laughs> and that, like, the whole sentence, like, I know I'm getting old. <laughs> I fucking know I'm getting old. Just reading that, that sentence makes your brain start to twitch. It's yeah. on the blockchain! Right. Yeah. <laughs> You don't understand. <laughs> it's I don't I like I don't even know what a fungible like it's fucking crazy, man. I yeah. I get it. I'm not that I get the concept of it. I understand it. If you had bought I even bought a, a little bit of crypto as a joke, like just to fuck around. Yeah. Like it's a, like a, it's like going to Vegas and throwing twenty on black. Like yeah. that's all. I don't like I'm not gonna retire on I'm it. not against the idea of crypto. Like I I, I get it. It's yeah. it's like it's banking. You gotta with, decentralize it's banking man. without banks. Like yeah. I do I do understand yeah. it and the technology has value. And I do sympathize with digital artists who create digital art and Absolutely. did not have any way of really like authenticating shit that would get stolen. Yeah. However <laughs> Yeah. With all that said. However, did you see Lamborghini? Um if you pull up Lamborghini's Instagram, Lamborghini today, uh, I saw this morning. Oh, no, it wasn't Lamborghini's. It was, uh, it was uh, I want to say it was Bonhams or RM. I think it was Bonhams. They're auctioning off the last Aventador. Okay. Great. Yeah. Cool. Last Aventador. That has value for sure. Absolutely. Paired with an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, so what, alongside an NFT and a digital twin, what... If you have the car, yeah, 
You presumably have. This is like, you know what? This is the first case of owning the NFT and actually having the real. Like, this <laughs> one is the first one that ever makes sense. Right. And but you have, the person who buys the car, they're going to say, okay, and here's your NFT. And they're going to go, Oh right! Uh, talk to my grandkid. I guess I don't yeah. know how. Like they're not going to care. They're going to yeah. give it as like an Easter gift. Here's an NFT. With for cars, sure. it makes even less sense. Like yeah. you have the here's the title. There's a VIN. Like mm-hmm. there's a there is a way to authenticate this. Like, I've heard related to cars. I've heard there's so there's ways to use the blockchain in the future for like vehicle titling. That oh, uh, Alpha said they're going to start doing this, right? There's something I, I heard something else even before then, but yeah, Alpha's on the list. Like there, I was, I, and I forget it now because my brain is mush after two weeks in Hawaii. Mm. But there was a way to like use the blockchain to make for a more efficient vehicle titling service, and like I was, I'm like. This actually sounds like an interesting application of technology that I thought was pure bullshit. We could also maybe upgrade the DMV computers because they're running on 486 right. processors that's the, right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the real thing. Like, right. It's ultimately a data, data Give my for, like the yeah. ingress and egress of it. It's like we could put gun ownership on the blockchain. It's like, or we could just move it to digital period to yeah. start because right. it's all paper. Right. Yeah. They still use those printers that have the little holes yeah. on each Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 There's something satisfying about that That's tear. That's true. I agree. Um, yeah. We could maybe That's not do insane. that. So I, 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 <laughs> I I don't normally in, involve myself in this type of garbage, but I could. Right. This morning with my coffee, I saw this. I couldn't help myself, and I commented on the auction company's Instagram. I was like, "So you buy a car and get nothing, huh? Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Buy this Lamborghini. They're like, we don't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The auctioneer's gonna be like, apparently, you know, it's gonna be some British guy. He's like, An they NFT. just need, you know, they they've they've probably got. A fucking millennial social guy who was like, "This is it. Yeah. We need to. We need to get involved in yeah. this. It's the. It's fear of fear of missing out. We want to be seen as fucking in. You know. That's but true. It's, yeah, it's definitely someone it. in marketing. We need to do an NFT. Every company's doing yeah. them. But if you have the real thing, right? <laughs> well, got, uh, the NFT was created in collaboration with a digital artist and uh, Steve Aoki. I'd rather Steve Aoki threw a cake at me. And I, I'd I would love to know how much they paid Steve Aoki. He yeah. must be like, mm-hmm. everyone I work with is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, my family made their money from restaurants, which yeah. is a thing. Yeah. I make music, which people enjoy. My sister's an actor. You know, like all this stuff that like, there's something tangible or at least visual yeah. that you can take in. He's like, you're going to pay me to... To do this? To do, oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I don't even have to throw a cake. Can, can I at least throw a little piece at you? Yeah. That's why like a lot of the... That, even that title is like something Lamborghini would behind the drop. Behind Lamborghini would write drop, that no. behind the drop because they do sneaker drops and you they guys, do mm-hmm. the word drop. It's very cool right now. We're gonna drop this car <laughs> instead Wait, of calling it. We're sale, gonna drop it. It's called drop. Yeah, Maurizio Reggiani is like I don't know what the I fuck is about. I don't give a shit. I don't know. Just give me a new suit. <laughs> right. Is the drop where they drop a bunch of Aventadors right. into the North Atlantic Sea? Yeah. <laughs> because that's where a bunch of them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't call it that. <laughs> Yeah, you ever see that Steve Aoki documentary? No. Called I'll Sleep When I'm Dead? Oh, I've heard that title. I didn't know it was him. I mean, it's not the first time that phrase has been used. But, like, you know, the the life of, and if you've seen the documentary about, um, oh, who was the... The the DJ that that died uh, who oh the them. Vegas resident DJ oh, Avicii. guy yeah. Avicii yeah. him too sad. same same kind of deal like they literally work themselves like you know they they're they're young enough and like partying enough and have enough enough physical energy where they and, and they have a private plane right. where they'll go from Ibiza to New York to Vegas in one day <sighs> and do gig 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 five hundred thousand each. Oh. You know what I mean? Like I'll sleep on the plane, yeah, blah, and yeah. you know until they literally collapse, and then they 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 go to their fucking house in Cabo or whatever right. for like three weeks, and then they do like Recharge. seven laps of the world, and it's just it's fucking... brutal though. The Avicii went sad because he's in the hospital and yeah. his promoter, someone was just like, "How are you feeling today?" Because like we can't. Oh, get back on the we plane. all need like, to make. We're shows, not going to make money unless we you have play. these shows yeah. booked, and you know he's having real trouble. Yeah. yeah, it was that one was really sad, but the 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 Steve Aoki one, I was like, I don't really like his music or really, I don't, I'm not against it. I'm just right, not right. into it's electronic not, yeah. music. Right. But I was like, this motherfucker knows how to work. Right. Um, and I even saw, I saw him on the street once. Oh yeah. Um, and I I I've heard his songs maybe one fucking time, but right. I walked right up to him and I was like, dude. I saw your documentary and your work ethic is fucking crazy. And I had just I had I was driving my Fox body. Oh, nice. And he was like, "That's a cool car." Man. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, That's cool to hear. You ever see his the p- photos of his dad of Rocky? No. So if you don't know Steve Aoki, the DJ, his dad was Rocky Aoki, founder of Benihana. Yep. Also, 
uh, was an, a champion offshore powerboat racer. I in did the know 80s. that. Yes, I did know and that. And you did not become a champion powerboat racer in the eighties if you were not tangentially involved in cocaine. Right. Selling not it, tangentially. moving there, it. Some of these boats probably said it. cocaine on the <laughs> yeah. side. And if where's a there's a, dude Rocky Aoki's fucking his hair. Yeah. Said. I love cocaine. <laughs> There's one, that one on the right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that guy. That guy, <laughs> the, his, his, those aren't He's, even, the guy the, on the left, those aren't real teeth. Those are just cocaine chiclets. The guy on the <laughs> right, that Rocky's on the right, that is basically Japanese Randy Lanier. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> pretty, right, pretty right. much. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that, that dude did seen some shit. Hell yeah. Yeah. How crazy to see a boat fucking flying With through the, the air and the under Benny it? Hanna on it. I know. <laughs> That's so awesome. Like eight feet in the air. Just yeah. Those boats are ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And there's some of the newest ones, you know, that they're that they're building carbon hulls yeah. and just these insane, twi- like four twin turbo yeah. fucking big blocks. Yeah. Well, I think stumping. we talked when the engine came out, because um, I, 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 we both like boat shit. The... Um, I think is it the Mercury? V12? Yeah, yeah, the, the vertical V twelve, Ford V twelve. Yeah, and it, what is it like eighty grand for it's one or su- something? Super super expensive. It's a yeah. vertical V twelve, and, and it, it has like a two speed gearbox inside of it. Yeah, and and there was a boat that had four of them off yeah. the back as the demonstrator. The engine doesn't move. It has right. an out. It has its own out drive yeah. that moves. The engine stays straight. It's really really crazy. Oh my god, it's so. Sick. I follow a lot of these like. They use them on like the big center consoles, like okay. the forty-five foot center console. But the tournament boats, boats, where they're like, "We got to get to the spot first. Yeah, there, there it is. World's first seven point six liter uh, in an outboard. Yeah, isn't that nuts? It's a, it's it's insane. It's, that, is an, that is an Aston Martin engine. Holy shit! Six hundred horsepower in an outboard. Yeah, this has four of them. That's yeah. four of and them. It's a fishing boat. Yeah, yeah. but you got to get to the fish first. That bo- I mean, that fishing boat probably does ninety. That's yeah. too fast. Yeah. I went 70 on a boat once in Miami. I was like, this feels like 180. Yeah. Speed over water is a wild. It's Oof. a different it's yeah. a different kind of vibe. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. That's uh that's your tangent for the day. The Mercury V12. Run. I know. And and Mer- you know, Mercury Marine and is has a relationship with General Motors. Yeah. Uh they built the C4 ZR1 engines. Yes. Right, right, right. Um which is really really interesting. Which was one of those facts people were like Wait what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they uh, and uh, that company Speedcore has a Mercury Marine mm. engine in their fucking charger. I remember charger. that. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's a really cool, um, you know, and Lamborghini has a history with race boats as well. They had they had a marine engine that uh, they were running in the late '80s and early '90s in offshore power boats. And so you remember the LM002, of course, yes. the Lambo SUV. Then there was the very very end run was the LM American. Do you remember that? Mm, no. So the LM002 is the Eurospec one. Right, okay. And then they sold it in America for one year. Oh. The LM American, right? Okay. Basically the same thing, but the Italians knew that American like Americans liked torque in oh. their SUVs, so they put the fucking boat engine in it. Oh, wow. So the LM Americans have the seven liter marine version Still of Still a 12? V- it's a V12. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the, the boats fucking, they put turbos on them also. How, there can't be a lot of the Americans. The no, I think I was, Johnny drove one recently, and I think he said there was like maybe a hundred. Oh, that's even the, more than I would have guessed. Yeah, there's very, there's very. I few. thought you. I, it, I expect you to be like fifteen. Oh yeah, there's, there's not. I don't, I don't. Well, I might be. Not that, that wrong, a hundred is a lot. No, but, but there's. Oh, they made three hundred and ninety nine or something total. Okay. It might, it might be very. I low. never. I might be off. I never would have guessed. How many? That how many? How many? Uh, Lamborghini LMO to American. Let's see the so wiki. Cool. Is there a production production so number? Cool, uh, here's the wiki. Oh, look, one went let's on Petrolicious. Back let's in, see what the wiki says of production numbers. AKA, I love that in the, in the wiki, total, it's like AKA Rambo Lambo. Yeah, Rambo, 328 Rambo. total produced. That's very few. And then go down to, scroll down to production. Is there, uh, keep going down. On the right, it might, it might, oh, it doesn't specify. Evolutione. Mm. It does not Ooh, specify. They had a Paris to car rally mm. one. Now we're talking. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't give us an exact one. But there's. It's fucking small numbers. And then if if you want to go even further back, so you know Riva speedboats, the yeah. Italian mm-hmm. beautiful boats. So Ferruccio back in the day um, wanted like the sickest Riva around, and he took got two NV12s from the 365 Lamborghini, sent them to. 
Riva and had them put in a boat. And that boat is still around. It was restored. Really? Yeah, there's videos of it on, on Instagram. It sounds incredible. That, and it, wow. it's fucking quick. Two it's from V12. like the 60s. Yeah. You know, wooden lake yeah. boat. Yep. And it's got... 700 horsepower that's sick that's it's sick so we're gonna badass. it's funny we're getting like off on a boat tangent it's but fine. my favorite boat i have a favorite boat um i have a favorite boat brand too but my favorite boat there's the there's this place called the ocean house uh-huh. in uh watch hill uh-huh. rhode island you know like very really she she fancy place like uh taylor swift's house yeah, yeah. it's like the most expensive private home or something but there's this sick is it like by newport no okay. it's it's way further south uh it's almost near the border of connecticut so it's, like five miles yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you when can't I, use the word when way to, to when describe when i went to college no, i went to, I went to college town. in rhode island and if and we were in narragansett and if we had to do something in newport we'd be like i'm not driving that fucking <laughs> that's true the college is different i remember i was like i'm not gonna go to denver it's like right. it's 20 minutes right <laughs> but there's this boat it's called the aphrodite it's docked down oh i know that boat Boat. Yes, it's a very famous boat. Oh, I love that boat. So yeah. the guy owns it. Just Google, just Google motor yacht Aphrodite. Yes. Yeah. And the crazy story about this, Wasn't I love a Kennedy boat or an Onassis not boat. Not a Kennedy boat. Onassis. It was a businessman in that one. It was a businessman in New York who like the blue, drove the it from one. Long Island to Manhattan. Yeah. Then he donated it to the war effort. Uh, yeah, the blue one top so left. These that boats thing. are called commuter boats. Yeah. So you would if you had a baller fucking. If you if you had a, a job in the city and your baller summer home in Connecticut or Rhode Island, you would commute. Yep, that's to, what this boat this was. Thing. He donated it to the war effort. So when they were doing testing offshore, like uh, whoever was president was on this boat watching, and this boat was faster and smoother than the PT boats. Uh, oh um, wow! Then it wound up in a swamp in Florida. I thought Somebody rescued it. Took years. They fixed it, yeah. it, and this boat lives in uh, in uh, Watch Hill, Rhode Island. I bet that boat costs. Two hundred thousand dollars a year just to keep floating. Yeah, you know, like it's that. Gore, it's a, it's stunning. It's oh god, yeah, yeah. That photo. It's funny that photo you just pulled up. Like almost looks like because we go there when we visit my wife's family, and like that photo that almost looks lives? like it could be like her cousins in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that dock. It sits there. You can just I sit there and I stare at it. It's the best boat. I drove a boat kind of like that that was built for Billy Joel. That was Billy Joel. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That did seventy. Yeah, that's... and it was it was it was that big. It was a sixty foot boat that had zero staterooms. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was a commuter boat. Huh. It's a fucking day boat. Well, what's inside? Just like bench seating, bench seats, and a, and a table and a big ass bar, like a stand up bar that would have a bartender at it, like a piano, and a, a head, a, a bathroom, and then just a table. No fucking staterooms, dude. Wow. We ain't, we're not sleeping. We're taking this bitch back that to means the crib, you got, dude. Uh, no weight in there too. That's probably you it was know. so fat. What? It was really fast. Oh, and it awesome. handled really well too. Right. But you drove it out here, right? Yeah, it was in Newport. Yeah, yeah. It sold. It had Big Boat Ben had it. Follow Big Boat Ben on Instagram. He's right. my fucking yacht, nice. my yacht master. Nice. He's the guy. I love that. I like. I'm like one of like the seven people who like the the boat takes. Oh, dude, we had a couple that did really well. Yeah, the one, uh, the 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 the, the pontoon boat I drove that did sixty. <laughs> That one had a million views. A couple of them, really? like a couple of them, snuck up. Pontoon yeah. boat that did sixty. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, my buddy ripped. has a pontoon boat in uh, New Hampshire that has a roof that you can go up uh-huh. and a slide down, uh-huh. but it's also fast enough Hell to yeah. ski off. It's pretty sweet. Is that it? That's not me. Where's mine? I don't know where mine is. Oh, there it is. The Tri Tune. Three hundred fifty mile power. an hour. Seven two five. The seven twenty five RS. Dude, <laughs> what a name! McLaren's going to be knocking on I his did, door. I yeah. did that one on Lake Lanier in Atlanta. That looks rad. It was really fucking fast. It was no joke, that thing. I think it had twin 300 outboards. That's, which on a that's ridiculous. Boat is ripping. The so nose yeah. is lifting up. That's. But what's really sketchy about that is, you know, it doesn't lean. Yeah. So you can't just fucking, <laughs> you can't turn it into a corner. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like really shady. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How many views does that have, Zach? Let's see. What's it at right now? It was, at a, it was, at, it was over a million last time I looked. Why is the internet so shitty? I don't know. I don't know. One three. One point three million. Yeah, go watch my pontoon boat shit. <laughs> nice. Well, the, the internet's also live casting while we do this. Oh, that's probably yeah, why. that's a good reason. That's probably why. Um, it sucks that those are so hard to film. Like boat you stuff. Have, well, yeah, you got you need another boat. Yeah, you need a second boat or a drone, and you yeah. you know it's yeah. just more it's just more it's shit. A lot to more do. work. Yeah, but they are they it's it they were fun as fuck. I had a great that was that's a great fun. scam yeah. getting onto people. Uh, dude, when you told me you were gonna do that, I was like, I that's brilliant. I'm get, that's jealous. And you're like, all right, I'm getting my pilot's license next. I'm gonna start doing. Uh, Did air you see takes? Uh, this morning? They uh, there was a story on Twitter. They're trying to you know they're they're fucking trying to 
take Russian oligarchs' yachts. Yeah. So there's one guy has a 350 fucking footer. 350. That's this is crazy. like fucking. This is so big. So big. So they, it's at a dock in Fiji. Okay. Okay. And they're trying to take this fucking thing. Yeah. That that's it. I bet I bet the picture they pull up is. Uh, Oh, that's not the picture they had. If you go to my Twitter, it's right on top. The photo is them fueling it, okay? To fuel this thing, they had seven tanker trucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> this Holy yacht, shit. This yacht has a 103,000 gallon- 103,000. Fuel tank. <laughs> oh my God. So what's 103,000 times, times six, times six dollars? It's fucking it's crazy. Like, it's, like, it's like 700 grand. To fucking film this, thing, to fill this thing up with gas, the, it is the most. The Fiji, yeah, Fiji doesn't have that much gas. Oh yeah, God. right. Yeah, yeah, you can't just hook this thing up no. to like a what's, dock pump. You, you have to arrange that months in advance. Yeah. I wonder what. Uh, like, what's the range though? Eight thousand nautical miles, which is ten thousand miles. It's one point two. So half the okay. earth. So you go ten. Right? You go halfway around the earth without refueling. All right. Yeah, look wow. At that. It's a sick boat. I mean, I don't believe that individuals should be able to own things like that. Right, but, right, right. But it is an amazing. Welcome aboard, of, Amadeo. Look at all the trucks, dude, on oh the dock. God. There's seven trucks. <laughs> That's isn't that wild. Wow. They're just lined up. Right, right. Like fucking <laughs> bananas. I mean, yeah, it's like, like yeah, it take gray. that guy's boat. You think one of the guys like, show. yo, can we just do a half tank? Like, <laughs> I'm using my uh, my government yeah. account. Like, yeah. we're, hey, I'm I'm get, I haven't been reimbursed from the last time. Right. Um, <laughs> Though, if he gets miles or points on his card, he is. And look at the money. size of his radar spheres on yeah. top compared to the size of a semi truck. Bigger. Yeah. yeah. Bigger. It's like the largest. Because yeah. those are probably like man, you know, Euro yeah. style semis. And Apparently, he had gone from Mexico to Fiji nonstop. I've heard some of. Crazy. I've heard some of these boats, especially the Russian oligarch boats, have like countermeasures. For things. some of them, do yeah. That, but that's not what the <laughs> the. If you want to be really next level <laughs> in the world of Russian oligarch yachts, yeah, what you need is a support yacht, because <laughs> this yacht. Is is meant for people, right? It's got, it's got the luxury shit, but you need a toy hauler. Oh, so you need to have your your all your toys, your chopper, and your prostitutes. Those are on the support yacht, and that follows you around. But I meant like like stuff can fight back. Oh yeah, yeah. defense for, systems, yeah, defense sure. systems and shit. For I mean, for sure, yeah, I'm sure it's got. You something. got because yeah. you're if you're that high level, you're thinking about security and safety yeah. of your family. And Did you yeah. see the guy who turned the the yacht hauling boat into a yacht. No. Wait. It's called Yacht OK. No, I think I have seen that one. It's one of the ones that sinks, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And that he made that in his personal shit. (laughs) Yes. That's awesome. I've seen that one. I've seen that one. And he's like, yo, why don't you come over, bring your yacht, (laughs) we'll just load it up. Just go. And then we'll just go. Gas is on me. Yeah. (laughs) It's fucking crazy. uh, No, it's called Yacht OK. That's the name of it. Nice. Yeah. Yacht OK. Millionaire bucket list. And there it is. Look, that's it. Yeah, it fucking sinks. The playing field. Yeah. It's oh yeah, and there it is, sunk in that one. Yeah, look, he's yep. got a soccer field on the bitch. Yeah, it's like you turn a, a reliant transport truck <laughs> and then he's into got your the, uh, RV, that's like and a, your friends can like pull up because that's yeah. a big sailboat. Right there. It's a, that boat is a hundred and a hundred and fifty foot sailboat on <laughs> on the back of it. That oh my god. So semi submersible. Yeah, so it sinks. Right. And then you drive your boat into it, and then it lifts up, and that's how you transport. Four hundred eighty feet long. Yeah. <laughs> that's insane. That's too, that's too right. much boat. Find that, confiscate that shit. Yeah. Just, I'm that's, just going to sink, bitches. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's probably I'm good, for, like, submarine. good for hiding. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, that ain't can't be. That boat's tiny. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. Anyway. Nice. Drive anything good recently? Um, Let's see. Yeah, I was telling Zach, because uh, I joke all the time, I'm not one of these. There's a handful of journalists um, where they're like, Porsches are the best, man. It's Porsche or nothing. You know, there, there is no substitute. I came up with that. You know, like, <laughs> that was my tagline. I'm like, okay, I don't worship at the altar of Porsche. And then you drive one. You're like, God damn it. Yeah, this happens. is so good. And I had the uh, 911 GTS Targa. Oh, they're great. So that's like, I was t- saying to Zach earlier, the Targa GTS is like a compromised version of the Targa. And I don't I don't care. It's a compromised version of the GTS. Because right, the concept of a GTS is like, oh, I want some of the good shit, but I, I, I can't afford the goodest, the best yeah. shit. But the one I was driving was like 179 out the door. Um, and I don't care. 
it was perfect as it is because it doesn't get the full rear suspension that the coupe and convertible get because of the top and I'm like I don't care. The one I had was green with a brown interior. It was gorgeous. Oh gee. I hadn't driven one of the earlier manuals because everybody said the earlier manuals weren't great in the Porsches. Or at least, I mean, if you go back to the nine nine one seven speeds, yeah. like they're not the best. But okay. the nine nine twos are fine. Yeah, this this felt great. I think the yeah. GTS even gets like the throws from a GT three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was fucking awesome, mm-hmm. and it sounded good, and it was comfortable, and it was gorgeous, and I loved it. And it's I'm like, and I, then I like get angry at it. I'm like. Fuck these cars, man. Yeah. That's well, that good. one, the, the Targas are just kind of heavy. When you start to really yep. push them, they feel heavy. But as a daily, a daily mm, it's perfect daily. I didn't, it, like Also, with the manual, because I know the PDK is better, but like this has rev matching, so I don't have to try that hard yeah. to shift it in traffic. And No, they're not hard to drive. Loved it's it. Not like, it's not an exercise. When no, you're it was not. It's the cl- there's no workout with the clutch. I got flight. the Heritage Targa that had the corduroy interior. Corduroy. Yeah. <laughs> It was awesome. Wow. It was fucking yeah. cool. So. so then I'm pricing them out. I'm like, well, I got to do paint a sample if I was going to do one. So like yeah. when I was done daydreaming, mine was 212. Yeah. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like a few years ago, that was a Turbo S. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's, it's bananas. I have a Turbo S right now. The yellow one you the posted, yellow right? One. Yeah. yeah. It's 226. Yeah. And it's the lightweight, so it, it's had no back seat. They just take shit out and add money. And, and to add it. money. Yeah, so it's got no power adjustable <laughs> steering wheel. It's got manual seats. It's got no back seat, lightweight glass, um, no nose lift, and it's 226 and grand. And no one, I, not no one, because people do track their Porsches, but like people... There's not that many people tracking that car. I yeah, I don't no. think. But like the, I, I would w- rather I mean, get the GTS because yeah, yeah. as a daily... Awesome. The difference in performance between a GTS and oh. a turbo is not usable right. hardly anywhere. <laughs> Years ago, I was merging, if you know your California freeways, I was going from the 91 to the 241. 241 is great because it cuts into the backside of Orange County, right near where I live, without going into like the heart of the 55 and all that shit. So to get onto it, though, is this long upward two lane that sweeps to the left. I'm Orange getting, County is good for those. I was in of- an Audi R8. And next to me is a guy in a 911 Turbo. And we might have glanced at each other, allegedly, and we both punched it. Hungry. And I he was <laughs> fucking gone. Yeah. And I am in an, an, what the average person would be like, that's a supercar. It's like, it's a good looking sports car. And, and this guy was gone. And I was like, I'm laughing. This is a dumb. And like the car was, it looked stock. You know, there's yeah. nothing to give it away for not being stock. And we get up to him. He's like, man, yeah, you know, mate, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, bro, like bow down. Like that was, that was fucking mm-hmm. ridiculous. Because well, he's making all the torque at zero, basically. Yeah. 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 I was, yeah. I was, it was I mean, eye opening. I had the Turbo S in April, first week of April 2020. So it's nobody on the road. Okay. And I got five miles from my house before being pulled out of the car by California Highway Patrol. Told to put the keys on the fucking roof. I mean, literally, <laughs> and and almost arrested and had the car wow. impounded after hitting the throttle one time. Wow. And I then did. when I went to make the video, it rained. Oh. And so I didn't really get to it. So this is, I mean, we get to have like a real go this okay. time, fortunately, if yeah. I don't get arrested between now and then. Um, Years ago when the, uh, the, the last... The most recent GT350 came out. I drove to Malibu to take it from the journalist who had it to shoot his B-roll. Mm-hmm. Like I was hired as freelance to shoot his B-roll. So I get it. I drive up here and we're going to go to the Malibu Canyons. I get on the, what is it, the 10 that cuts and yeah, goes under? under the tunnel. Yeah. And I, I just got on the freeway. I maybe got up to third and I got pulled over. <laughs> coming, coming out of the tunnel? Not even. I didn't even get to the tunnel yet. <laughs> oh, um, they were under and the, the cop was like, this yeah. is the new one, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, there's another cop up ahead, man. He's like, just slow the hell down. I'm like. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, I got the, do you know how fast I had to go to catch up to you? (laughs) And I was like, well, you're in an F-350, so you had to go 99, I'm guessing. Right. You know, like, you couldn't go fast. Right. And and obviously, when someone says that, that's the first indicator that they've got nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. off the record- He's like, no, tell me, how fast did I have to go? Off the record made that shit go away in two seconds. Yeah. I have used off the record for one, and not speeding. It was, uh, but- I, I, this is a good plug if they still work with you. Of course um, they do. I, I was driving my daughter to fucking um, kindergarten. <laughs> Took my wife's CX-5. And there's a, a turn that it, it dead ends until you go a left or a right. And there's plenty of visibility to the left or the right. You can go straight if you're going into like a complex that's yeah. a parking lot. So I roll up to the stop sign. I had a red light. There's no one coming. I clearly see it. I roll the light and I go. There's a motorcycle cop on the inside on the sidewalk. Mm. And, I'm, and I was like, mother 
I'm like my daughter's in the car. I'm like in my wife's seat. I'm like I'm not speeding. Like make it worth it if I'm getting pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> I immediately pull over. I didn't even bring my wallet because I was driving. Like I didn't. He's like, do you know your drivers? I'm like, I do because yeah, I write it down I so much. Fill it not out for every, tickets, but <laughs> I fill it out every week. <laughs> right. I, that happened to me once. He's like, do you have your ID? I'm like. I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. He's like, why do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I rattled it off in two seconds. Yeah. He, and he's he gave me the ticket. I was like, mother... F-. I'm like, wait, Matt works with this company. I'm going to try it. Uh, I did it. And the lawyer was like, 200 bucks, where the <laughs> fine is really expensive. It's yeah, like yeah. 650 to 800 for that. You Plus have to go to court. Yeah, and all, all that, that shit. Stuff. I was yeah. like, I don't feel like dealing with this. So I... I the guy kept del- like he wasn't good at communicating, but he didn't need to. And then if I like really pressed him, he got back to me, and uh, he kept delay, 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 delay. And then oh. I get a text one night. He's like, eh, "It's dismissed. You're good." I was like, yeah. wait, "It's done." Wait, what? I thought yeah, he was gonna yeah. get it reduced. Yeah. Or this. He's like, "No, it's good. You're all." I was like, "Yeah." What the fuck did you possibly I've do? I've used it three or four times. It's, it's they've always vanished. It's, it's brilliant. Great. It's, I'm, I'm going to look into the camera again. It, amazing. Use off the it. Record.com yeah, slash off TST the record. Yeah. Or code TST10 on the app. It, uh, they do not advertise with me, and I can tell they you should. it works. Why don't they? Yeah, I don't know. Give, they should, give we, should, we should connect that. <laughs> There's no reason not to. Yeah, we fired the to. podcast back up. But, yeah, There's need no reason not to. They should. There you go. Um, and yeah, so that, that uh, I don't know. They, they be, When a cop, when they go, do you know how fast I had to go to catch up to you? That that translated into non cop speak means I got nothing, right? And I'm offended because it took me a long time to catch up to you. Have you ever tried to crack a joke, or like use some humor oh, with yeah. the cops? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You and ever try to do that with a black friend in the car, and they look at you like you're fucking crazy? <laughs> that's a whole. That's, uh, to that's me a too. whole. Chappelle. Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. Chip, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't know I, I couldn't, couldn't do that. Do yeah. That. <laughs> great, great bit. Yeah. Uh, that is a good bit. No, I, I I was on an Audi press launch and I got pulled over. Just like nothing crazy, but you know, in Northern California on a nice winding road, come around a corner, you know, no one on the road, just totally in control of the car. And it was probably like a lower, because it was a one lane each way. So it was probably speed limit was like 55 or yeah. 60 or something like that. And I was probably doing like 75, you know, um, maybe 80. Uh, the cop, maybe the cop, the cop no, I wasn't going that fast. The cop comes up and he's like, uh, and he looks stern and pissed off. He's like, do you know how fast you're going? I was like, I don't know. Speed limit's X. I was like, maybe going over. Uh, I said, like, whatever I quoted him was like five over. Yeah. And he looked at me like I was an asshole. Yeah. He goes, I have you on radar at this. Yeah. I'm like, okay, just let me grab the paperwork yeah. and uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like, why I just said say no. Yeah. I, so I got popped on that one. Did you hear that there someone had just broken a cannonball, a round trip? Cannonball record. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. Red Ball to Portofino to Garad to Red oh. Ball. It's like 65 hours. So they made a new metric, basically. And they did it in a fucking Saab 9.5. That is it worked the whole time? only That's five the... hours longer than the electric run I made in 2019. <laughs> One way. <laughs> yes. Oh, That's, See, imagine that's impressive, actually. Imagine 65 hours. Fuck that. Dude. That's crazy. That, obviously, a team of people. Like, that's not a... It seemed like there was maybe three people yeah. in the car. Yeah. What, but why? Oh, I, why? And I don't... It doesn't even seem... It doesn't the, the seem fun. The adrenaline crash at the, fir- the first Portofino, and you're like, we got to turn around. And That'd be it wild. Because you got to just go, and you don't want to dwell there. you got to yeah. get the, on the road. No, thank you. Yeah. That's fucking that sounds crazy. Like a, that's an absolute nightmare. It's, it's a, literally it's like, the we worst did, we thing. We did three I, it's people. It's just about the worst thing I can imagine driving But the one. best way to set a record is to make it up first. <laughs> he didn't make it up first. Someone it was it, it was it broke. Yeah, they broke some exist an existing oh, record. It I was not corrected. I'd never heard. I never before. heard him yeah. before. But uh, Doug, uh, switch cars, Doug, who is like you know in, in charge of this now, I guess. Uh, he he said that in his Instagram post that they they broke whatever the record was previously. That's wild. I love that when COVID hit first hit. There's like the record's been broke. The, re- the the record's been broken. Wait, I'm, I'm just, just getting the records. Ten, when it was like no, ten in the record's been yeah. People were like people were like wait. There's a pandemic. Get the fuel. No, one, no one's on the road. Perfect. I'm gonna need a sixty gallon fuel cell and yeah. some fucking uh, vehicle wrap. Yep. Make yep. my tail lights look like Honda Accords. That was actually brilliant. Mm-hmm. That, that was E class. One of the E class and the Audi. Yeah. The, you see the, the Audi. I only saw the E class. No, that E class that looked like the Accord was amazing. Was amazing. The Audi that they turned into a Taurus was even oh, better. Oh, I would have thought they would have went like like something Volkswagen. No, look, they made an Audi into a into a fucking. They Accord. made it look like a. Like uh, a cop, cop car? Tourist. Yeah, cop tourist. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It was very good. 
Right there, yeah, bottom left, you can see the yeah, lights look, really look the like fucking, it. It looks better from the back. Yeah. yeah it looks like a Taurus. That's smart. It's pretty cool. Real smart. Yeah. Really Those guys smart. are getting pretty good at fucking tape. Is that the same Mercedes people or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, Ar- it's Arnie and Doug. They're having fun with it. Yes, they are. Um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. When we did it, we we did it in 2019 just to show you could go across country in, in an electric car. And the plan was we're like, wow, we're going to beat Kyle. You know, out of spec, had the record at the time. We're like, oh, we're going to try to beat Kyle's record. And then we're like, there's no way we're going to do it in this car. Let's just now the goal is to just do it, to show you can do it in an yeah. electric car. We had to go further south than we wanted because we couldn't cut the panhandle in Texas. So we had to go to, all the way down to El Paso. Ugh. Yeah. So full driving time and counting charging was sixty hours. That's a lot. But did you did you nap while you were charging though? Uh, helps, yeah, well, you or? could. I and mean, there were three of us, so oh, mm. that then we could do the nap. Yeah, uh, and was it was the best. It was in a Model Three, uh, Etron. Oh, so not even like we didn't super have good range. range. And, yeah. it, and the New York got a cold snap right before we got there, mm. so we had to cut the first charging stop shorter than we wanted. And it and so then it snowed in Colorado, so we couldn't go that way. So we're like. There's no, we don't have a shot of the record. We just are going to yeah, show. E- 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 Electrify America was like super happy that we showed you could just you do could just it. do it, yeah. yeah. And this was before, they, they have more charges now and shit, so. Now the problem with electric road tripping is if your destination is not a major city. Like, like Hannah and I went to wine country mm-hmm. and then spent a couple days up there and then tried to come, and it was like, there was nowhere to charge at all yeah. in wine country. Yeah, which is crazy. And that's crazy. not entirely unique. If you went to like a ski town or yeah. whatever, like there might not be. They have to be jumping on it. So like Napa, because sure there's so are. many Teslas coming from San Francisco, though they can make the trip. And That was, I mean, that was what was weird about it. It was how many, there, actually, I think there might be a Tesla supercharger, but there was yeah. nothing from the from the other. There's companies. a lot of like coming soon with these. I mean, if you look yeah. at the maps, and especially on, online, there's like the gray ones, which yeah. is like, this will be built soon, or the site has been purchased, and right. you can see like in a few years. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hydrogen more more. car guys are like, come on, man. Oh, yeah. Make I got a, a uh, I got a <laughs> Lucid to go to Phoenix for Pearl Jam. Oh. So I'm gonna do that in, awesome. in one one charge. Who's the lucid c- contact? I need to talk to. I want to drive that car. You, so not, you haven't? No. Oh, I, we can set you up. Okay. With the guy. I don't know who the PR person. Oh, they're, is for yeah, lucid. they're cool. Okay, sweet. They they didn't have very many cars oh, of course, in the beginning, of but course. now they now they have cars. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're cool. They I said I, I said what you know I want to do the because we got we drove the the super fast one okay. in a pissing rainstorm right and it was still fucking crazy yeah you guys fast. were stoked on that car it I was awesome so yeah. good it was really really nice yeah. and, and then you're gonna do the range one now I said yeah I want the range one has only nine hundred right. horse which is <laughs> so sick and and the, the big takeaway is that it's, this is an actual luxury car inside oh, right yeah. oh, it was yeah. like a Model S is like if you've never seen a luxury car you're like this is fancy we no, just had the EQS nice. last week and. And the Lucid without air suspension rides better than the EQS with it. Okay. The best thing about the EQS is that you're not on the outside looking at it. Because on the inside, right. it's an S class and it's great. Mostly, yeah. On the Very outside, nice. mostly, not I, quite. I didn't even think that screen was distracting. I was like, this is kind of cool. I actually didn't think the screen was distracting. I thought the screen for all of its, all of the hype surrounding it, it was awfully conventional, actually. Uh, you know what I mean? They like, should have pushed the, pushed it more. Yeah, something with the I graphics mean, or yeah. There it, are little Easter eggs that we didn't have, but like I watched Doug's video and like when the seasons change, yeah, the icons oh, change. Mine, There's uh, these little like almost like fart button Easter eggs. That but the, the car in mine with. had a uh, Christmas hat on it because oh, it was that right. season. Oh really? Yeah, there was like oh, okay. snowy yeah, Christmas trees. I think but we're, yeah. the gauges but we had it over Easter and there was no like there wasn't. Oh like, really? Yeah, That's you true. didn't you didn't no pull up the backup cam and there was just like Jesus on a cross. Beep. He's like he's like keep going, keep going. All right, stop, stop, stop. That's the trailer. Guy, yeah. Nice. No, but it's funny because like the regular gas S class has better gauges because mm. they have that crazy 3D thing, which I thought was a gimmick. I'm like, this actually looks amazing on the S class. Yeah, I haven't. We haven't used S class. Awesome. Yet. But we did notice both of us, and I had Hannah sit in the car. So Hannah's five two, I'm six three. Zach's five ten, 10 eleven. Yeah. So we we had we had pretty much the full spread. You cannot sit in the EQS. Adjust the steering wheel to the correct height 
and see the gauges properly. Okay. It fucking yeah, blocks like off. The gauges are too yeah. high yeah. and the dash is too high. Right. And well, then because they, they love those like the, for the gauge cluster, they like the squared off. Yeah, the yeah. squared off, and then the um, which work in the G class because the wheels like you're, you're fucking like, on yeah. top of it. Yeah. But the 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 driver monitoring system cameras are then in the gauge cluster above that screen yes, yeah and so i kept getting this pop-up warning oh i didn't mind i mean blocking the get half the gauges for the steering wheel is kind of annoying yeah but then i kept getting a pop-up message saying raise the steering wheel because <laughs> we the can't see you can't. so when i put it to where it where the gate where the driver monitor wanted it it was up here and i'm steering with, i'm whole lifting my arm right. like this is so stupid huh. and i i saw alex roy yesterday he was in town for one day and i told him this and he goes where's the cameras and and i said in the in the, the dash and he goes they're not on the steering column because i guess everyone who's fucking smart yeah puts them on the steering column so it adjusts with yeah, the yeah, column yeah. right and he, he was like that's weird as hell i just we don't understand it but right. but the lucid um seem i mean we only drove it for an hour but it seems pretty well thought out mm. and I'll have a follow up after. Nice. I gotta drive that. We thing. do twelve hours. I'm to excited. Pearl Jam and back. Uh, that's that's a hustle. But you you you're doing L A as well. You're doing both L A S. Both L A S. Damn man. Yeah yeah. Nice. I'm doing it Friday and Saturday. I saw them. We both saw them on different nights in uh, at Ohana. Yeah yeah. Dude, I was so excited for that show that I got too drunk. And oh, I don't no. remember. Like I never get too drunk at Pearl Jam because I want to enjoy. Like I want to yeah. make memories, bro. Uh, I didn't remember like the last four songs. Oh no! Um, Fortunately, you can look it up. No, I, I bought the the, the <laughs> recording. The yeah, 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 I bought the bootleg of it. Um, but it was great because everybody crushed towards the stage, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And there was a bar at the back, like, and 40. I just sat at that bar. Oh, the one to the left. Yeah, yeah. That and I'm, bar. I'm like, like just sitting there, and and I was like, they they told us. I, this is what fucked me up because we get there during the day. Mm -hmm. Taylor Hawkins was there, RIP, with his band opening up for one of the things. Um, but there was uh, there was the bars spread out. Me and my buddy Derek, we go into the different bars and we're like, oh, that's just that has session IPAs. That's yeah. perfect. She's like telling us their sessions. And I like finally after like five or six, I look at the bottom I'm like these aren't fucking sessions. They're like full seven point <laughs> six or eight. I'm like, we're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> like, Goodbye. Keep going. Like we're not driving home. So. I had my my buddy who I shoot videos with. He took the press car. The deal was he's gonna go shoot B roll and then pick us up. So we got yeah. picked up in, oh, in an Urus. Perfect. <laughs> and we're like, bye, all the Orange County housewives. Ooh, who are they? Getting in and out of that festival sucks, but everything else yeah. about it is great. Yep. That festival was the only time in the last six months that I missed weed. Mm. That because. Everybody around me was fucking blazing joints, yeah. and I'm fucking Pearl Jam is on, and I'm like, this is and this they is, sounded good. This is, this this is, is what weed was This made is the for. time. Yeah. This is literally what weed is for. Yeah, and I I didn't I didn't smoke, but like it's the only time in the last it's now eight months without without weed, almost nine months. It's the only only time I've and I thought I was like maybe. Maybe the show and fucking maybe. my triumphant return. Maybe, but but yeah. You, you all, you all of a sudden way, yeah. like you hear the I like to get high yeah. playing in the background yeah, like yeah. a movie scene. You like <laughs> walk out the exactly. smoke. He's back. He's back. I don't know. Maybe I could. Maybe if I eat an edible or something, and then it won't feel so much like I'm like I'm smoking because I never had really much of an. Well, edible see, thing. I never, I never really smoked, and then the last few years it's legal. I've I've started getting into edibles at night. Where I'm, yeah. You know, so it's funny. Like it's you've sunsetted it, and I'm like, what's up, baby? Maybe hey, just hand it off. <laughs> yeah. Pass yeah. the torch, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start giving you craft beer. Yeah. I'm very excited He's ben for, uh, for You're the Luke. upcoming yeah. tour. I think I think it's good, especially because like they've they've been they've been doing shows pretty regularly yeah. since then. So yeah, now they went to Europe, right? Right. So now they're gonna maybe get a little deeper in the catalog. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, and it should be it should be great. I'm and excited. I bought these tickets. I bought the tickets to these shows February. Like the end of February 2020. Yeah. So it was like, buy it now and shut it down. Yeah. Like 100%. That's so why I bought my, my buddy was going to fly from Boston to come, his, his yeah. favorite band, too. Uh, and then that happened. And so I was like, hey, I just got the notice. The tickets are good again. He's like, it's it's the weekend after my wife's birthday. And it's also uh, the day before Mother's Day. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. So, but I'm but still the, going. But <laughs> Phoenix and LA were spread apart by like three weeks. Originally, oh, now it's Friday, Saturday, L.A. Monday. Phoenix. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Are you guys like doing a turnaround, or are you gonna stay in Phoenix? 
Uh, I, I'm, you, Hannah's not coming with me to Phoenix. It's Christian, right? No, you, he can't make it. So oh. Christian's coming with me on Friday. And then Corey Burns and his wife, Katie, and me and Hannah are going to go Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then Marco from TLG is coming oh, to nice. Phoenix. I was nice. like, Marco, you need to get the fuck out of L.A. Yeah. Come to Phoenix and see Pearl Jam with Sweet. me. So he was, he's down. So we'll, we'll stay just the one night. Sure. I yeah. will be there on the, the, the 7th. Unless Jensen and Ant... Let me drive the Radford. Oh, that's a good reason. And I saw Ant at the opening of the bike shed. Okay, last I heard week. about that. Yeah, you hear about this place? I I know there was like one in London that was right. like iconic, yeah. and now he wanted to bring it to the states, right? I don't know what to, to what degree he's involved. If he's an investor or whatever, it's it's he, he might just be friends with them. Okay, um, but this place opened downtown. And it's it's like a venue and a bar and a restaurant and a retail but store. But it's public. It it's is not public. like not like because I was at the motoring club. No, no, it's today. open to the public. Okay, it's open to the public. And and uh, and they had an opening last week. Like I don't know if I understand the location. Yeah. Like I don't see downtown L.A. as no. a motorcycle or car destination. It's really kind of hipstery in downtown L.A. though. A little bit, but like, see, look at that. Look, it's a beautiful yeah, building. That is, I mean, that it's is got these cool nice. tufted leather well, couches they, yeah. and big kind of industrial like bar, and it's sort of steampunk. And there's a tattoo parlor and a barber shop in there, and like a Royal Enfield dealer, and there's a Braemont store in there. Like, it's fucking big. Huh. I um, wonder where that is because. My tattoo artist is in downtown LA. <laughs> I'm like wondering, like, how close is that? It's on Industrial. Hmm, I gotta Google where it's my sort of, guy is. You know is. where where Magnus's warehouse is? Yeah, it's near it's, one of the bridges. It's, it's by the bay. It's by. Well, that. It's right near the bridge. It's no longer here, Mike. It's, <laughs> it's by that. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Some, a they've done nice, a really yeah. nice job building it out. My question is, will anybody want to go to that area? It's you know what this is. This is like for hipster. Kingsman fans, <laughs> kind of yeah. Like that room on the side is like where they do their spy meetings and shit. And then the, that bottom right photo is like the press launch oh, okay, uh, yeah, room yeah. where you you would park your car. I literally went to a Ducati press launch in there oh, like two oh, weeks ago. Nice. Okay. Um, so I saw Ant at this thing along with a, a bunch of other folks, and I was like, he's like, huh? You want to do anything with Radford? I was like, I want to drive yeah, the fucking car, yeah. bro. Right. And he was like, oh, you know, it's not quite ready. We'll see. And I was like, well, I want to drive the fucking car. So yeah, even if you do like some slower speed, like uh, if you're first, that's wanna, a huge. I bit just want to have a go. Yeah. Yeah. And so they own that. They oh, they bought Bondurant. Right. So that's outside of Phoenix. So maybe maybe I can make that sweet work and have a and double go, a double right. Go off. drift the lucid around fucking oh Bondurant. It does. I could fucking do a lucid like track test. Yeah, you should. Lisa like, said it works quite. Make well. sure they can charge yeah. Juicy up for the drive home. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got Electrify America out there. Good they to go. They got 350s out there. Perfect. It's all fucking solar, too. Good it's to Phoenix. go. Nice. It's Phoenix. We got uh, questions from the people. Let's see what the Patreon has to say. If you want to ask us questions on the show, if you want to listen to the Smoking Tire podcast without ads, if you want to listen to the episodes right after we record them and not have to wait till Tuesday and Thursday, patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire podcast. Get on it. Trying to figure out what, what the next level of membership is going to be. Ooh. Someone commented they'd watch one takes with no ads. I'm like, well, we can do that. But that's a different thing. It's a, it does is. it matter? Uh, it doesn't matter. This is just the first person that commented. <laughs> I guess we could, if we combined, if we somehow combined, could, could the pot, I guess, could the Patreon be for both the podcast and for the car reviews? It totally can. The, I mean, the only, right now, Patreon is Patreon at the Smoking Tire Podcast. Mm. So the branding would mm. be different. Could we change that to just Patreon slash the Smoking Tire? If they could, I think like, so. for if the we URL. Because I think when I first made it, it was the Smoking Tire, and then we changed it to podcast. Yeah. But yeah, I think we could. Ooh, we should talk to the Patreon lady. Because, like, I mean, exporting one without ads is like not that hard. Nope, <laughs> we could we could do that. Mm -hmm. If that if a higher level included car review videos with no ads too, I would do that. Sure, let's look into that. If let's talk to the lady. What if they're yeah. like though? Even though they're probably counting the ones at the beginning, right? Would you strip those too? No, I would take yeah, those I'd out too. All of it. The thing, the the Patreon is not enough people that it right. affects your real sellable numbers. Okay. It's like a thousand people. Right. It's not like it's ten thousand. No, no, no. So it's it doesn't materially affect your your sellable numbers. So it could be a thing. Uh, Forrest Wright wants to talk about two bears racing. You see this? I shit? saw the the E forty six they bought. The, yeah, which is great. So I helped him find that. It looked like Tom was 
I could barely get in the fucking car. Well, he didn't understand to take the steering wheel off before oh. he climbed in it. He now <laughs> understands that and right. he fits in it fine. All right. I think we still have to do some adjusting of the seat oh, a little sure. bit. Oh, like, sure. Because like, the car just like showed up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 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 But, but it's full caged. Ex- it's, yeah, it's a brand new car. It's it's a brand new book car. Oh. It's done two short races, two spec <laughs> races. It podiumed in both. It's never done an Sick. endurance race. And it's a completely new build. Does new that engine, run the normal manual gearbox? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's and it's so it's going to um, be interesting with fresh race car drivers. Yeah, fear shifting a gearbox and clutch. Well, he's Tom is going to join Harris Hill. Okay, because it's Harris Hill's the cheapest racetrack membership on the fucking planet, and he he lives in Austin. It's down there. Okay, he's got an instructor. He's going to practice. I'm going to go down there with him and run some sessions. Oh, he's not an LA guy. No, he moved to Austin. Okay, um, but he's like he's in Austin like. Two days a month, he yeah, lives on fucking sure. tour. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna practice. I got Simpson Racing has gotten us getting us all gear, custom suits, Sweet. helmets, Hans. Nice. And the company that built the car is called Legacy Motorsports. They're out of Sacramento. They also do trackside support. Oh, so when we go race, yeah. they're gonna come. We're gonna right. just have them. Yeah. Run, run the car, right. so not, Tom's not gonna be like Matt. Change the tire. Be like, no, no. <laughs> well, no. We're like, we're gonna do shit. Oh, but really? Like, yeah. Like Bert, like wants to get involved and like do stuff. That's and impressive. Bert bought a fucking giant smoker to tow behind the rig. Like he's he's out of his mind. It's gonna be fun. And so, uh, what Forrest wants to know what racing series we're gonna do. We're gonna do Champ and we're gonna do AER. Okay. And it depends which which race we do and when depends on their schedule because they're fucking. Yeah. We're probably not going to actually enter a race in 2022. Yeah. He's going to spend the rest of the year practicing and and because his, he's got they they each have like 200 tour dates this year. Yeah. So, but well, he, his tour name is fucking hilarious, but and and accurate. Yeah. yeah I'm so, coming everywhere. Right. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, so he just he literally doesn't have the time to to actually go racing this year. So we'll probably end up doing races next year but it's sense. really going to be fucking fun and they're talking about like setting up a stage in the paddock and doing sets that's amazing they're talking about like bring headliner well, comics now to i want to go <laughs> like <laughs> like doing... if i'm not in the race car i don't care to be at a racetrack but for right, that yeah. yeah to see headliner comics yeah. like doing sets at the right. track like who knows if that'll happen but right. that's what he's talking about that's doing. different logistics yeah yeah, yeah. um Bobby Reed, Red or Reed, wants to know, are there any 24 hours of lemons races in store for Jeff in 2022? Uh, our team is running, fuck, where are they running? Um, they might be doing Thunderhill soon. I forget which is the next one. I can't make that one for whatever reason. My who wife might be out of town. Team? The guy who I co-founded Hooniverse with oh, okay. and then like his dad and a couple other people. But we've run, we run an old car, one of the older cars out there, and uh, we have fun with it. It's a 62 Ford Ranchero. Oh, God. <laughs> and we, we have a blast. With it, and I uh, almost said, Yeah, I'll get a seat in that. And then, no, <laughs> okay. it's a blast. We've we've had a lot of fun with it. The last race we did was at Button Willow, and on the parade lap on Saturday, we blew our engine. Whoa. Hey, uh, and this is an engine that just went back together, uh, so they just didn't shim something in there, and it all came apart. So he didn't even like trip the light beam Jesus. to do one so lap. Zero came laps. In on the, we did zero laps, but uh, Tim, the, the car owner, was like. He's like, I'm going to take this engine apart now because we have a, we've got paid for one of the garages. Like, mm-hmm. If I don't do it, I'm not going to take this car apart for three months. There was a cam lobe in the oil pan. Like It was <laughs> a, 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 amazing, amazing destruction. He's like, yeah, maybe we should check Craigslist out in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, hold on, please. And I found a dude who pulled, because it's a straight six, Yeah, pulled a straight six out of a map or some car to upgrade to a 302. He was two hours away in Bakersfield. Tim and his dad were like, uh, he called, emailed, and texted him like right away. He's like, pick up, pick up, pick up. The guy's like, yeah, engine's here. It's good to go. Uh, he's like, all right, you two, me and this other guy, Jeff, on the team, you get everything out of the way. We're going to go get the engine. Did you Did you? We'll be back in four hours. Yeah. Okay. But we had to get like other components and shit out of the way. Right. They were back. We had the engine fired by midnight, and we raced all day Sunday. Oh, I, nice. I, I have a question. When you pulled the engine out, did you mark... The hoses and and wires and things that you when you took them off of the different pieces, so you knew where they no went because on the everyone engine? on my team knows all that shit. Oh, okay, yeah. Cool. Like it, I, I would be wary of not racing with Tim because he his day job is he's a biomedical engineer. Like he runs teams that design stints to help yeah. with your hearts and your brains and shit, and he also knows a shitload about cars. So when we're wrenching, he's like. If something comes in, is broken. He's like, "All right." He looks at it for a second. He goes, "All right, get this, this, this out of the yeah. way." That's, he's a genius. You need shit. one of those. Have you ever yeah. ran a whole race with the car? <sighs> he, 
yeah. Sunday's we a whole were day. doing whole day. Oh, is a race one day is a race both no it's days. two days it's okay. like eight hour days with that car yes we came in under the checker at Thunder Hill when they ran the full course once which was gnarly because I'd never ridden the back driven the backside before mm-hmm. I was like oh first time over oh. the hill I went all four off I was like oh, oh shit. shit but it was the parade lap so they didn't like flag me I was like just get back in line <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> shit. and then I was fine the rest of the day but it, like because you come over and it's like a it's left totally or something blind. yeah or a right whatever it was but that we ran that we ran that whole course but we blew a head gasket and he, he fixed it in two hours Nice. Um, so we kept running, and that was fun. I got a speed t- speeding ticket on the way to that race. <laughs> um, but we had we ran at Sonoma, which is a gorgeous course, and our slower driver, who's also our safest driver, so we're like, ah, just it's lemons, just turn laps. He was driving up turn one is a left up under the bridge in yep. Sonoma, and this it was later in the day, so the sun is like shining right down it, and there's a, a GoPro team in a five series BMW that's racing up the outside car, of him. Yeah. They snap the back of this this truck car and we still have like the big ass steering wheel in there we did and he it sends him into a spin he doesn't he overcorrects spins now he's backwards facing up the hill and a c4 corvette comes boom so it was passenger side on passenger side both cars are out both drivers are fine but that crash caused the new lemons rule because so they hit passenger passenger our car had a non-collapsible steering column Yikes. You big yikes. So now all cars, if they're older, they, yeah. you have to have it. Can you wow. retrofit? You can retrofit that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Lemons. Uh, <laughs> Nick wants to hear stories about the early days. <laughs> I mean, I've I've told every story I have. Do you have anything that... I don't have any crazy memories. I just remember it being a lot of fun cruising up there. So this was like pre-child for me. Like, if you want to pop up, like, not a big deal to just cruise up for the night. Um just, I just love. I just yeah. remember. I just remember. Uh, like uh, Nino would always like. He, he transformed into Pizza Dave. I don't know why we. I forget why we used to call him Pizza Dave. Oh, yeah, but that shit that was so from? funny. And then like the people you would get into your house. I saw Patrick Long at a Porsche event. We started uh-huh. talking about the podcast. Yeah. yeah. And we were joking about who you would get into this house. And then some like people, famous people, famous people, <laughs> who like would either be like. Ah, oh, this is this is pretty cool. I get this. Would be like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, is that a bong? The first, yeah. the first twenty-five, like Pat Long was on, Steve Dynan, Jesse Combs. Yep, she didn't come back for like five years. Dan Neal. Dan Neal was there well, real Dan early, Neal but he was, was into it. Yeah, yeah he, I, I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I woke up one morning and he was just on my porch smoking weed and playing my guitar. <laughs> that's I awesome. didn't even know he was in town. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. You had the one guy on who was also on your show when you were on the Dan Neal show. Sally. Yeah, John Sally. Yeah, who called? Sally. You were telling a story and my name got brought up and he made a joke. He's like, "That guy sounds like an idiot." I was like, "Yes." I was, I was yeah. like, "John Sally, just call me an idiot." He also <laughs> cooked us dinner yeah. Did he? when he came on nice. the show. Yeah, he he tried to convert us to be vegans. Oh, so he cooked us vegan sausage was it and good? peppers. It was yeah. great. The only way it could have been better is if it had it was, meat in it. it was yeah, meat. yeah. Like, you know, this would make this better. Pig. But he um, was. Fu- John was funny as fuck. John was great. Was great. Uh, I don't have anything that stands out, but I just really enjoyed that time because it was like a young. Yeah, it was fun. Fun. Yeah. It was yeah. an incubator house. That's yeah, it was. It was it an was. incubator. It worked, yeah, basically. Yeah. Totally worked. Yeah, I should yeah. have bought that house. I could have. Good spot. That house. I could have bought that house spot. for it was a, a third of what it's worth now, though. But it was such oh, a that's mess, true. remember? Yeah. I mean, it was like a one even story if you that sold it as a, three. If you, no. Even if you sold it as a teardown today. The the land is worth right. more yes. than what I could have paid for the house Definitely. back then. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cosgrove, what happened to your Hemi Mercedes swap? Uh, I still have it. Do you really? Yes. Fucking I've had it for eight years, maybe. My wife thinks more. It's still at a shop that says they're going to get to it any day now. It's not going to be a Hemi. We sold the Hemi. It's just too wide of an engine for that engine bay. So we're going to go. I LS. know it's yeah, probably yeah. LQ to be even cheaper is that the than Escalade you, engine. Uh, the LQ is like the van or truck oh. engine, but then you put the LS heads on it, and it's basically an LS, uh-huh. which is plenty for that car. Yeah, for a um, Mercedes, whatever. The it's gotten to the point now where. I'm like, because it's one of those, hey, we're going to do you a favor on the price, so we're going to get to it when we get to it, but mm-hmm. they keep having these big jobs. They do like tons of hot rods and muscle cars and all, like wait, a wait, bunch wait, of Broncos now, too. Just remind our the Benz listeners, yeah. is an 84 or 85 uh, 300 TD, so W123 or S123 if you want to be specific about it. Um, and the uh, the plan was to- W and S. S. So W is kind of like, uh, W is the- 
technically the sedans. S one twenty three is the is, wagons. Yeah, it's oh, technically I didn't the wagons. There was a difference. Yeah. yeah, there is, and like there's a, I think there's a T one twenty three as well. But oh. if you just say one twenty three, so. This is a great example. I redesigned it's, my website. It's so old, <laughs> so long ago, the images aren't right. There I anymore. redesigned my website, and I paid a guy to do. I love the design he did, and he said he could bring all the old content to the new website, and we lost half our photos. Mm -hmm. And it, we're talking like I launched this website in two thousand nine, yeah. so like years of photos and even some articles are gone. But there, there it is, right there with the the engine sitting in it, but not like bolted in or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's too big. Oh, look at young Jeff there in the bottom. Um, so, <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> that was the first time I was ever on TV. Yeah. And NBC at the Elliott Show. You really look like a child me, in that They picture. called me a blooger. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I was on television. It was live at the LA Auto Show. That's hilarious. Or on camera at all. That's very funny. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was great. It was good stuff. Well, how long, so? So the the, so the, the, the Mercedes is, is coming. The funny thing was, I wanted to safari this before people were safariing things, and now people are like, if I did it, they're like, that's that's been done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I, I started this project eight years ago. <laughs> I, like, bro, I wanted to. But it would still be cool. I would still you safari. Still, yeah, I would still, still do should. It. Uh, Dan Mosqueda, uh, Jeff, will, is that your daughter? Yeah. Will, will, will your daughter get involved in karting? She seems to enjoy cars. Uh, my daughter wants to be a, either a pop star or a barista are her two chosen professions right well, now. Well, she Sweet. tries to be the first one. She'll probably end up being the second one. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, I, I don't think I can afford karting. I would like to see what I can do though, but I don't, I mean, that's a game that is, that's a rich man's game. Yeah. It leads to rich man's things, which I am not. Yeah. Uh, Damir Basic says, my fi fiance wants me to, this is a strange question, uh, wants me to buy a blue or white dial watch under $1,000. Swatch. Well, yeah, if you really want to save some money. <laughs> Swatch. The problem is, like, almost every brand sells a blue and white dial well, watch. Citizen like, has a, tons of white. Yeah, stuff. like, blue and white are, like, very popular dial colors. Yeah. So, uh, you kind of got to... You need a little more information. Like, you want a dive watch? Yeah. Do you want a dress watch? Do you want a, uh, a, a, a casual watch? I like, was just in Hawaii, and I was like, can I take this watch? Not this one. Uh, I bought a, a, a relatively inexpensive Hamilton. Uh -huh. It says 10 bar. I'm like, that's technically, you know, that's supposed to be, you can swim in that. Yeah, you can. You can't, like, go diving. It's right. not a diver. And I was Googling, like, can I swim in this watch? Because I wanted to wear it while I was snorkeling. Because sure. they were like, make memories with your watches. So I uh, half the people were like, I would never. If it doesn't have, like, screw down, case, yeah. blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I totally get it. If you want to do that, wear a diver. Other people are like, just fucking wear it. Like, And it's also, the retail on this watch was 900 and I got it for 300 Right. I'm like, you know what? Worth the I'm risk. I'm jumping in the fucking Worth ocean. Worth the risk, yeah. And, so, and then when I got back, I rinsed it with like tap water in yeah. case there was salt water hanging on it. Sure. And it's still ticking and working for 10 now. bar is like a bar yeah. is 30 feet. Right. So like 330 feet. Yeah. Like, so you're, you're fine going right. in basic water. Does the crown screw down? Uh, it pushes. No, it doesn't. It pushes all the way in. Okay. Yeah. So that the real danger with, with that is if you were to somehow knock the crown right. while you're in the water. Right. That's really the the risk. Mm -hmm. um, the most the, the the measurement that really lies to you is the 50 meters. The oh. some like vintage watches and really entry level watches will say 50 meters water. And you're like, no, oh, 50 meters. That's like, like you can splash. That sounds like a lot. Literally, that's like wash your hands with it. Yeah. Like yeah. you do the dishes. Right. Like I wouldn't get in the fucking pool with a 50 no, meters. No, I've heard like the minimum is the 10 bar watch. The 10 bar, yeah. yeah or, or 300 feet yeah. is, like, is a minimum for swimming. Yep. Ideally with a screw down crown. Right. But if it doesn't have a screw down crown, push that shit in. Make sure, it's, <laughs> make sure your crown is pushed in. Try not to knock it into something. Right. And, you don't want to do it in a watch that's too valuable. No, if, if no, it gets, it's, and it's it's it a mechanical fun. too, which is kind of a novelty these days. Yeah, no, and, like wear it for yeah. for a, for a watch that's under a thousand bucks. Fucking wear it right. in the water, you'd be fine. But I didn't want to do it with this old Seiko just because I wouldn't necessarily it's trust. Old, I wouldn't trust yeah. the seals in that. Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go in the water. Right. And this watch was free, yeah. but I didn't want to ruin it. It's a very nice piece, but Thank I you. still wouldn't. You st I, I wouldn't risk ruining it in the water. Won it on Instagram, not yeah. with this band from DC Vintage Watches. Oh yeah, Nick is the Nick man. Is I send a lot of people to DC. Anyone who sends me weird vintage Seiko shit, I send straight. Yes. To them. Um, Brandon Martinelli, 2023 Vegas GP, sounds like a good idea, but will it be? Uh, 
Why not? I don't see why not. What, it's, a, it's the one of the could be perfect cities. It, it yeah. is. And the roads are pretty smooth in Nevada. I can't remember like specifically on the strip or not, but yeah, they, they spend a lot of money on their tarmac in Nevada. Yeah, it's good enough. Yeah. There what'll be cool about it is there'll be a bunch of hotel rooms that you can watch the race from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be sick. So that'll be kind of cool. Yeah. Um ideally there'll be places that you can watch the race where they won't like like in Monaco. Monaco is a cool place to go to a race, right? But they've really figured out how to fucking extract that cash mm. in Monaco. You can't see the track from fucking anywhere mm. that you haven't bought a ticket for. Really? Unless you rent someone's apartment right. or something. Right. So in in Vegas, like it seems like there'll be more opportunities to like get a hotel room somewhere yeah. and watch from there. Um, but like, yeah, it should be fun. Like F one is like when you're not racing, it's like partying and prostitutes, yeah. and like that's what Vegas is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I was, like, this is the first time we don't have to hide it. <laughs> I mean, and it's like on the strip. Like from what I gather about this Miami one, it's not like it's in South Beach. Yeah, it's I like, just learned that. It's, it's like, like it's north it's of like the city. It's outside or Miami. Yeah, which oh, is, is it? Oh, yeah, it's not in the fucking. Oh, okay. It's not in the. They're not on A one A. No, which I, that, if they're racing on Lincoln, like fuck yeah, yeah. dude, like that would be sick. But that that's not sick. what it is. So with um with Vegas, it's like they're on the the strip. They're racing in 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 the city. So I wanted to look at the streets around to see if it, yeah, see, there's some like curves available. I mean, yeah, I saw the layout. It's, it's kind of interesting. It'd be. Awesome if they banged in through like one of the valet courts or something. Yeah, that would be that that insane through yo, yo. the fucking like yeah. wind. Slow them down enough Some so like big enough. one that's like enough. bricks. <laughs> oh, that would, that be, would awesome. be amazing. Um, and the second half of his question was, "Who's your driver constructor pick for?" Oh yeah, there's was that the the track? Let's get the layout. Let's see. I want to see the layout. Um, oh boy, cookies. Oh, can we fly through it? Is that the? Is that a, oh, we, we can't. We can't. That, the video will be too choppy, Probably. right? If we fly through it, um, six uh, kilometer, fourteen turn street circuit. A lot of Let's straight. See which wow. way a it lot runs? Of straight. Runs counterclockwise. Yeah. Um, and it looks like. Let's see. I think that's Treasure Island. Is this Bellagio right there. That's the Bellagio. So it goes on the strip from. It looks like the Encore. Uh, At the end, on the on the left, and the encore is that the is it the Venetian? Uh, that might be the might, front of the Venetian. Might be the front of the Venetian where the comes, gondola boats and comes stuff around. Are. Yeah, in front of uh, is that uh, Bally's? I think, and it goes by Mirage and blah blah. blah. And then you turn left after uh, New York, New York. Maybe? So it's like a couple Across sweepers, a couple hairpins. Not not as many ninety degree corners as I was expecting, which is good. Yeah, uh, it'll be it'll be pretty cool. I mean, for for night, it'll the be the idea awesome. of it will be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even if the track's not like amazing, yeah. like, who gives a shit? They're, it's a they're racing in Vegas. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it seems like they'll be able to go fast. I mean, they'll be able to fucking pick up some speed down the strip Jeez, right yeah. there. And it's actually kind of convenient because to cross the strip, you got to go over those bridges anyway. Like those yeah. those pedestrian bridges are already constructed, so that's actually. Pretty helpful. Yeah. I think it'll be fucking That pretty, would be, be cool. I wonder if they're going to let anybody up there during the race. Uh, oh, on the bridges? Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it, too, because yeah, that I would be it. sick. Or if they do, they'll cover them so you can't see anything, so people yep. won't want to oh, stand there. Yeah. Oh, it's like That's, free good seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, picks for driver and constructor? Looks like Ferrari, Ferrari for right for now. Not Aston. Yeah. Like Leclerc. <laughs> Not Aston. Looks like Leclerc is going to be uh, yeah. going to pull it out. Uh, Adrian Pulido uh, wants a Montero update. Uh, Montero is good. I drove it here. Uh, it's, I mean, it's already quasi overlanding. I'm never going to go. I don't like rooftop tents, so I'm not going to do that. I was talking to Zach before the show. I'm going to do a. Um, I just added a roof rack, and the, I was never going to do that, but I want to add an awning. So I just put the roof rack on, and uh, I'm going to add a 270 degree awning with some some. Doors I can roll down. Dometic just sent me a f powered oh, fridge. Wow. cool. And then the portable battery system for it. And I'm going to add some solar. So, like, weekend warrior shit. Like, yeah. I'm not going off the grid for a, a week or a month or anything like that. But just enough to, like, enjoy camping with it. Same wheels I've got on the Delica. Same wheels. Yep. Same color, too. Yeah. Um, and it's got Fox shocks at all four corners. And it looks so cool. It does look Thanks, cool. Thanks, man. Um, does it drive nice? Drives 
Yeah, I try. I'm like I'm. I can more than keep up and pass on the highway if needed. Okay, What's cool. the maintenance reliability like on the Monteros? <sighs> I, honestly, I think you could pour sand in the gas tank of these things nice. and they'd run That's forever. I like I just you got to watch out for some oil things in the engine here and there, like any car. But if you take care of this, it'll run forever. Sweet. The, the, this truck has the truck has three because I just adjusted the odometer. So the vehicle Sorry? history report, yeah, cor- t- to correct it up. The od- <laughs> the odometer, the vehicle history report said 272,000 miles, and then there's a gap, yeah. and then it says like 170. So oh. they replaced the gauge cluster. Oh, yeah. So then I took from the 170 to the, to the 192, I, and then I added that to the 276. So now the, it You're reads- the opposite of a Lamborghini. Uh-huh. Yep. Because I'm like, it earned it. So it says 324 or 325 now. So you know that like wow. all Huracans have rollback odometers yeah. now? It's like a super easy- like on the forums, everyone's sharing around this Vagcom tool to just oh change your odometer. God. That's like insane. You should just not buy Never it. buy a Huracan. Never buy a used Huracan or wow. any any Volkswagen Audi Group product. Uh, Rob Ferretti did a whole video about about it. Like, yeah, it's crazy easy That's a to nightmare. Just pause the miles or oh. just display any number you and want. And a lot of these guys buy because it's one of those cars that you see like business guys yeah. in Texas as the write-off car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here in LA, they're always wrapped with a weed company logo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, last one. Y2K Punk. I'm from Canada. I don't think the breakfast burrito fandom is kicked in yet. What do we look for in a breakfast uh, burrito? Uh, my reference thus far is a scrambled egg, red green pepper, onions, corn, black beans, Monterey Jack, and chorizo. That's like a real Mexican breakfast burrito. Yeah. I like a little bit more of a of a. Uh, American style egg cheese sausage. I like I like I like I like chorizo, but chorizo like is great. Egg cheddar cheese. I like the red peppers and onions, but I wouldn't go corn and black beans. I actually like when they stick a little hash browns in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, well that's like I like the one of my favorite burritos is the fucking white boy burrito, the California burrito. Yeah, that has French fries. In it. <laughs> yeah, Cal- California burrito puts so French fries burrito. in it. I like when they put the tots or the hash browns oh, a little bit in the burrito that's too. A, that's an elevated the tater level. tot yes. burrito. I want to just be able good. to taste multiple things. I yeah. think sometimes breakfast burritos are way too uniform. It's just like cheese egg. I'm not sure which part I'm yeah. eating. You want to be able to taste different ingredients. There's a good California burrito near me that I get when I, you know, I add steak to it. But then I also have them add cotija cheese, which is like. Oh a, yeah, you know, cotija cheese is a good secret. Bomb, yeah. yeah, yeah. But this guy's going full Mexican. I like to go lean a little towards American California yeah. on my breakfast yeah. burrito. Uh, and oh, actually, the last one Jake's film photography question. Uh, in the LA area, picked up a thir- my first 35 millimeter camera, Pentax K1000. That was my f- my first camera, and I have one now as a 35 millimeter camera. Nice. I bought one from a vintage store, thinking it worked perfectly, and then I had to spend five hundred dollars getting it <laughs> fucking fixed. Fun. Now it works good though. Uh, wants to know where to process film. Uh, I take my film to Sammy's Camera. Oh, yeah. Um, in in uh, Culver City, they have one downtown. My neighbor in Orange Venice County <laughs> is actually Sammy of Sammy's Camera. They are like lovely people. Yeah, and they are. You told car me about when we were walking by the house before. People. Yep. yep. They have like. They're like seniors. They're in their late seventies, possibly even early eighties. And the wife drives an E sixty three wagon, oh, and the husband drives a nice. Turbo S, just like the one I have downstairs. Oh. And they got a big ass fucking barn full of cars at their other house. It is cool as Damn. fuck. There's also a place. Can you look this up? It's called. I think it's just called the Lab. Oh, <laughs> and it's a it's a mail in uh, film uh, processing. Uh, I believe it's just called the the. Oh, the dark room. Excuse me. That's the other one that uh, Thaddeus recommended to me that he uses. I, I like to just. It's still like, it's a pretty long. Like even at Sammy's, like it's like a week or Is so it? turnaround. Yeah, because they have to send it out to a remote facility. Huh. But if they're sending it out, maybe you just want to send it out yourself. Yeah. So there's this place, uh, thedarkroom.com, that I also heard was uh, was good. So cool. Anyway. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for coming up. You want to get dinner? Yes, let's go let's get go dinner. Let's dinner. Let's try that again. Let's try that. More handshake. There there more handshake of a handshake. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, Hooniverse is where you get all the all the things. Yeah. And uh, good luck getting your Mercedes done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Truck looks Thank excellent. You. Yeah. Um, last minute beer recommendation? Um, that's a good one. That double daisy cutter in my Instagram. It's a Chicago beer, but I've been finding it near me. Mm. Um, 
Four Sons Brewing in Huntington Beach is one of my favorite breweries, so go check those guys out if you're in the area. And uh, yeah, we'll, stay, we'll stick with that because I could. This would turn into another. This would get long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Uh, for the P- Patreons, the patrons, we're back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for the Pro Driver Show, the extra ninth show that you only get if you're a Pro Driver on the Patreon. And uh, then early next week, we've got uh, Alan from uh, the CEO of HRE Wheels Ooh. is uh, is coming in. Yeah, Alan Peltier. He's going to talk to talk to us about the newest shit they've got going on. In he wheels. was on the, the shocks show so long ago. I think it was at the old house. I remember that and I learned a lot. I think I think he came to the, he came to the, the, studio, he came the, to the dentist office. Okay, I wasn't there. That I day, think he was there for the dentist really office. interesting yeah. information. Yeah, no, really he, they're good. they're fucking great. Uh, and I'm doing the HRE open house this year, which is a, a really big car show yeah. that's at their factory in uh, in every June, and uh, it's gonna be cool as fuck. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good night. See you later.